Let's go help some more people out. See if we can survive. Let's do it. Let's, let's go. We got this. We're gonna leave. Maybe. We'll see. We'll soon see. Oh, Paul. Hello, Dobie. What's up? What's up? Now it's going. I don't know. Which game takes a surprisingly long time to load. I think it's an Xbox One S thing again. A lot of these games I play take a while to load and stuff. Remember how long it took to load going in and out of the building for uh, that uh, pixel style role playing game I did? Or RPG or whatever. <sighs> that predecessor to Ravenlock. Echo something? Something Echo? Oh yeah, yeah, the menu music's quieter than the main game. Let's turn it down a bit. I think it's just an Xbox One S problem. Even the simplistic style games like this take long to load. I have a stabilizer. I have two of the things that make the thing next to it. Oh wait, we just took out, uh... Took out, uh, Hunter last time. But we still have Killer. And Killer... Is probably up this tower because I noticed there was a thing with two bars up there, but it's probably Killer. I wonder if I could talk to Killer first, or if he like I did Hunter, or not escape each time or not. What the heck am I doing? I don't know. There's like five thousand missions. Every time I start this game, I'll be like, "Oh, which one is it? What am I doing?" Let's just check all the things. I'm gonna hold on to my ship mine fragments for now. Well, I need food. I can see that. Well, you were helping this person fix their ship. Well, actually, we haven't helped that yet. Is there a time limit on that? Not right now. Oh, we're waiting for her to finish her thing. She's distilling, right? Here for Tal to finish her thing. Were we waiting for Fang to finish something too? Nope. Don't need that. What's this? Oh. Okay. Let's buy some food. Let's go. Hmm. I'm gonna hold on to my data for now because I don't know what I need. Oh yeah, I get scrap with some ability, right? Which one? Oh, engineer. I don't know any other way to get scrap other than the engineer thing. The perk. Energy there. <clears throat> I'm fading. Probably don't need to work for money right this second though. If we, we can put our dice into something else today. Oh yeah, I'm done with Castor. Was that his name? Yeah. We can do her quest. We haven't started it yet. Yeah, up here's where Killer is, isn't it? Hey, Woo Up. What's up? What's happening? How's it going? Yeah, see those two bars and the question marks? This is definitely where Killer is. This is shiny. Oh. I have no idea how to pronounce that AE letter thing. I'm just going to call it AE. AE1 mainframe is now mostly disused. Haven Age having set up their own master controllers. Navigator thinks Killer is hiding there. Navigator is right. Because if you go here, you see some question mark shit.
Weightless Wanderer. I think I have seen all this stuff before. Isn't there something with the ship up here? Yeah, it ships up here. Alright. Oh, I was working on this. I hope you have to help. There's a chink in the side rail horizon's vast armor. Okay, let's see. Slowly working on that. Oh dang, they want high numbers. Rah. I navigate to different nodes is kind of tough, or I just don't know how to do it effectively. Roll. I want this one. There you go. I didn't have any threes today anyway. I think it's just those three. Well, let's try it. You slot navigator and the clamp's luck. The ship mind is stuck. Are you going to get them out of this thing? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The cloud, huh? You slip into the cloud as easy as blinking. Navigator is beside you. There's fear casting light into the strange darkness here. This is not how a mainframe should look. A center, a point of connection. The object in front of you is severed, cut off. A rootless, branchless tree. Only the trunk remains. It's dead! Quiet, Navigator hisses. And then you see it, like a blade in the dark. An edge slicing through the void. It glides along at a distance and winks out. Then it, it appears again, elsewhere. Gliding once more. Searching. What is it? Oh. It looks so friendly. Killer, blinded. Erase your protocol. Oh, duh. The moment you make a sound, the edge leaps closer. And you see now it is not an edge, but the ridge of a long, sharp head like a shark. It glides past, closer now, and you would see into the void, it's, voids where, it, uh, where its eyes would be. Should be. You and Navigator exchange looks, both thinking the same thing. It is blind. That's very convenient. However, um, uh, you know, maybe be quiet and probably has ears. Killer crosses between you two, smooth as a razor, and then disappears. It flickers back in, further away now, and you move closer to Navigator to talk. You saw it too, then? Killer has been blinded. Ow. Unclear. This protocol has been running for decades. Well past its operational limit. Navigator's sons dull as they drop their voice to a whisper. This may give us an advantage over the protocol. You flinch as the silent killer appears closer and glides past you. Its empty sockets open wide. You turn to Navigator and notice something strange. Their orrery of spheres is collapsing. The orbits, usually round and even, are decaying. The spheres are following spiral paths, condensing on a central point. Navigator is noticing it too. They go to shift their position to better direct the spheres, but they cannot. Whatever is drawing the orrery together is holding them in place. They look at you. Suddenly desperate. Frantic. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's a trap! You go to speak, but Killer appears between the two of you, gliding through the gap. Navigator freezes, and you see them framed in the empty socket. 
You realize now, if Navigator cannot move, then it is only a matter of time before one of Killer's sweeps brings them directly through Navigator. And time is not a problem for a protocol that has been running for decades. You look desperately around for a solution, for a, way, for a way to extract Navigator from the mainframe. Then you see it. Three branches, the last three, thin and spindly, bring the mainframe in a thin diet of power and data. Break these and the mainframe collapses once and for all, severing the connection, shattering the hardware. Whatever it takes, they must be broken. But they are encased in something, a glassy layer of protection. You'll need to unlock access before snapping them from the mainframe for good. You look at Navigator, trying to reassure them without speaking, and then you blink back to reality, their expression of fear and afterimage that slowly fades. You must act quickly! Uh-uh. have to act quickly? Oop, I have some things. I have three things. Branch two. Branch one. Let's do them in order. Uh. Am I going to need encrypted keys for all those? How many encrypted keys do I have? None. Oof. Well, um, I, I guess I can't act quickly after all. I'm sorry. I am. You gotta sleep. What do I need for two? Are they all keys? Oh, I need nine encrypted keys. I have zero right now. Well, it's been nice knowing you. It's been nice knowing you, pal, but... I guess you're done. I don't know. It doesn't indicate the time limit yet, but... Hmm. Got it. That's just gonna be Yadagon data. Not encrypted key. Needs to be keynode. There's no keynodes down here. Rip. I might as well use my one if uh, there's a matching one. Well, two and three. Oh, well, I guess I can use my one for this. Not like I can do anything else for you right now. Hey, Mexican boy, what's up? What's up? How's it going? Hmm. How y'all doing today? How's it going? We, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, well, our, 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 uh, program friend is in trouble. What are we gonna do? I find some keynotes. I got some keys. Maybe that perk will help me get extra keys. Probably not. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's go up. I'm just fine, thank you. Good, 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 good. I have a three. Don't do that one. See about you. How's it going for you? It's going pretty well. Rip. I only get one of the ones around here. But that anyway. Let's uh, try the green area, greenway or whatever it's called. Wait, don't- isn't this area still shrouded? Yeah, wait. 
How am I supposed to get enough encrypted keys? Well, this guy might be hanging out for a while. What do I need for this? I have no idea where a Greenway Cypher is. Uh, I think our friend is doomed if there's a time limit. <laughs> there's an actual time limit. Our friend is toast. Oh, is Tala available now? I think she is. There. Tala comes to you one shift. When the bar is empty... Tapping you on the shoulder as you clean the bar. It's ready! He's grinning from ear to ear. Nagiro? Obviously! He grabs you by the arm before you can ask anything else and drags you into the back room. The smell hits you immediately when you enter. A cocktail of rich fermentation and chemical sharpness. The room is warm and bright now. The newly installed lights making the place look clean. Whether it is or not. Ella has already pulled up a couple of stools around a metal crate. Or two glasses with a few fingers of pale ghee roll sit inside sit waiting. He smiles. I haven't even tried it yet. You can see she is nervous. Wait, it's ready but you haven't tried it yet? How do you know if it's ready then? Maybe it's going to taste terrible. You have no idea. How's it going for you? It's going pretty well. It's Friday. You know how it is on Friday? It's like, woo, it's the weekend. Woo. Better thing to do Friday than spend a few hours reading through this game. You both sit at the makeshift table. The s s s My brain wanted to say sight, but it's slight. The slight strangeness of the situation making you both jumpy. Paula hands you a glass. Cheers, she says sol solemnly. Oh, wait, sorry. Cheers, she says solemnly, and knocks the glass back. You do the same. The first sensation is burning, a sharp, nose-clearing blast of alcohol that has your frame querying whether you would like to activate safe mode. <laughs> you gulp the drink back, and it is only then, behind the burn, that you taste the earthy tones of the mushrooms, the wood and the soil, left behind like sediment, barely there. Mmm. We say it's strong. Should we say it's terrible? Not bad, actually. I mean, uh, our our main frame was like, would you like to activate safe mode? So we're gonna go strong. Allah nods vigorously. Oof, that was heavy. As promised, though. You think? He swirls the glass and puts it down. Wait. I have an idea. Why is why is have capitalized there? I have an idea. Ella grabs a metal bottle from the newly installed work surface and adds a few drops of water to the gear roll. Try again? This time the burn is a warming glow, harsh but fading off, and the woodiness left heavy. You taste something floral in among the marshy decay, something fresh and bright that you never expected to find. Both you and Tala meet eyes. It's... Really good, right? It is. Ella grins with her whole face, and that makes you smile, too. Ella pours out some more ghee roll, and then adds some more water. The action's already taking on the quality of a ritual. You both drink. Ella tucks her feet up beneath her on the stool, folding her legs. She looks down into her glass and swirls the liquid thoughtfully. What's on your mind? Ella looks up at nothing in particular. My father opened this place, you know, she says out of nowhere, a thought suddenly becoming words. It was his attempt at making a life for us, for my family, when we got to the eye. Whoa, your family? My father, my mother, my little brother. She takes a drink. They aren't around now. <gasps> uh, aren't around as in, yeah, I'm going to keep poking her. dead? She puts her glass down. My parents, yeah. But my brother is somewhere in the Starward belt. Ran off with a salvage crew. Oh. I was just thinking about something my father told me. 
When he first set this place up, he wanted to call it the Bantayan. But he was afraid it'd scare off the customers, so he kind of translated it. Hence the Overlook. In these past few cycles, when I've been in here, I've been thinking that I should rename the place. He looks at you. The Bantayan. What do you think? I mean... Kind of translated it. So doesn't that... I mean, I'll, I'll pretend I'm stupid. What, what does it mean? Dad said he translated it to Overlook. So, something like that. Watchtower, maybe? Look out? Ella picks up her glass. That settles it, then. To the Bontayan! You both clink your glasses and drink up. Ella hisses through her teeth. Still harsh. She laughs, then suddenly grabs your shoulder. Oh, sleeper! I totally forgot! She stumbles to her feet. He lurches over to a corner of the room, covered with a plastic sheet, and whips it off, like a magician performing a trick. Beneath it is a neat little kitchen, a sink, a work surface, and a compact oven with a hob. Your kitchen! It doesn't give you time to respond. My what? You can come make stuff here anytime, as long as you promise not to raid the mushroom farm. I need those for the ghee roll. I was thinking, too, that if things pick up, we can start serving proper food at the Overlook. I mean, the Bantayan. He laughs. Do you like it? Um, it's, it's, uh, the only thing you can say is it's perfect, right? Is it... Is it yay or is it nay? It's a yay! A family? What? What? Tala gives you a hug, then quickly stands back. I'm sorry. I just... I'm so glad you're here, she grins. She automatically gave me a hug and she was like, wait, should I give this guy a hug? Does he even want a hug? Me too. As Tala tidies away the glasses, you inspect the kitchen, checking that it all works. It's small and salvaged, but after what you've had to put up with, it feels like a dream come true. Later, when she's done for the day, Tala comes back through to the bar, and you share a glass of the good gear roll. The one she didn't distill. And this time you talk about nothing in particular. Sharing stories about regulars or discussing the best place to eat on the eye. Which, after everything that has happened, feels like a nice change of pace. When it comes time to leave, you promise to cook for Tala. And agree to let her know which shifts you'll be working in the coming cycles. And then slip out into the cool of the rotunda. And in this moment you feel, for once, at home. Oh. Oh. Free spirit achievement unlocked. Help the friend distill their future. Distill with one L. Okay. You say so. That's the Bantayon. Wait, cook. Cook stuff. Cook mushrooms. Get the money with bar shifts. Hmm. Isn't there something I was waiting for with Fang? Is it in a, it's at the Greenway? Oh wait, he was gonna he was going to confront that guy in the Greenway. What it was? Let's put our six and two uh, the ship over here. Oh, what's the... I forgot what the game's called. That game player doing here. Like the achievement, isn't she? Sendry Silas must be proud. He recognized the resonating voice of Caster immediately and turned to see him, hooded and tucked into the shadows near the viewing platform. Castor. I see you remember our game. Good. He looks around, but the platform is clear. I'm afraid you'll have to wait for a rematch. Microgravity makes Tabla a little difficult. He smiles broadly. <sniffs> Darn gravities, or lack of gravities. Castor walks out to stand beside you on the platform. 
A telltale clunk of magnetic boots accompanies his slow crossing. Oh, so they don't float away because they have magnetic boots? That's actually pretty clever. That's pretty clever! I didn't even think about that kind of stuff. He notices you looking at them. I don't much like it up here, he explains. Here there was some trouble at the Haven Age shipyard when they announced the results of the crew lottery. They screwed us. I know. He sighs. Sighs. Beating your eye. An ugly business. Dealers are too used to the way things work in the core. Exploitation is the only logic they know. He gestures out at the side reel. You know why they built this monstrosity on the eye? Hmm. Under your control. Hmm. Honestly, it's probably both. If watching you was an achievement, it would be called She's Perfect, isn't she? That's goddamn right. That's 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 right. 100 gamer score. I'm going to say control. Certainly, there is no corporate oversight out here. But that's not all. He stares at the pristine yellow hole. Delis built it here, says Castor gravely, because they didn't want anyone to know it exists. He rubs his forehead. In secrecy is something I cannot abide. He turns to face you. There are people being loaded onto that ship as we speak. Sleeping people, locked in cryosleep like the person that you were emulated from. There are hundreds of them. And Silas wants to send them out to a planet at the edge of the settled systems without anyone knowing where it is. But you, sleeper, can do something about that. You are like me. You deal with data. You can read it right out of the air. With someone like you on that ship, secrecy isn't a problem. I can ping back whatever I need, whenever I need it. As long as you are on board. Hmm. With you on the side reel, and with some minor modifications, he pauses. You can be my eyes and ears. I will keep track of Silas's grand project through you. In short, says Castor, stretching, I can get you aboard, sleeper, but I am going to need you to help me. Who are you? I am a concerned party. Someone who likes to know what is happening when it is happening, not afterwards. It's not just me. Yes, your friend Lem. That can be arranged. It is difficult, but not impossible. The condition is, of course, that you go too. Astor clunks closer to the window, watching the tugs wheeling around the side reel. It's a simple offer, and the only one that will get you on that ship. Please consider it. He turns back silhouetted against the ship. But to make it happen, I need your assistance. As I said, there is a Sealess Foundation ship docked in the now empty shipyard. I need the data from its servers. This will allow me to produce the IDs necessary for your transit. Astor looks over his glasses at you. Sealess aren't stupid, though. Their ship is totally isolated from the station. You'll need to get on board if you want access to their airwalled servers. Once you have the data, meet me at your friend's unit so we can give him the good news. He smiles. I noticed his importance to you. And the little one. So cute. You don't extract the data before the side rail horizon leaves the hub? Then I will get the message. We have other options. Wait, we have other options, but you are certainly my preferred one. But be sure when you act, sleeper. Once you take the data from Silas, you'll set off a series of events that will likely be hard for you to untangle yourself from. Either way, I recommend you stop asking around up here. You're bringing a lot of attention to yourself. Castor glances around, as if to emphasize his point. There are only a handful of cycles until departure, sleeper. Make your decision. What? I have a time limit? God damn it. Ruffle cool, let's rock. With that, Castor marches off, back off the platform, the sound of his mag boots fading away, leaving you to contemplate the side reel horizon and the part it may play in your future. 
I'll allow. I do have a time limit. Rip. You will either be on board or not. I'm sure there's achievements for both. Shop, 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 shop. Wait, if I get on board, that's probably the end of the playthrough then. But I can't do the rest of the stuff here. <gasps> Sealess ship. Sealess Foundation Administration ship. Observe and explore. Careful observation and an instinct for security procedures will help you understand how to sneak on board. Bluff past security. The fastest way to know the ship is by pretending to work there. A plan so bold it might even work. I don't think so. Well, I can get Sealess locked down if security gets wise to the potential breach. The Sealess ship will go into lockdown for several cycles. Oof. So if that Sealess lockdown thing fills up, well, I am loot. Dead here. Hmm. The danger one will might immediately lock it down. Seems like observe and explore is the best one. Let's engage versus intuit. Illus infiltration, patrol patterns, security information, server room locations. You need to case this place bit by bit. Engage versus Intuit, huh? Ah. Oh my. I'm gonna call it an out. This game's gonna have multiple endings. It's gonna have a uh, get on the ship with everybody. It's gonna have well, may maybe it'll have go on or just get Lim and Mina and then not you. Maybe I don't know about well, maybe just you too. There might be three different endings there. Have limited time. I'll be interested to see what happens when you get an ending. If it'll put me all the way back in the beginning, or we'll go to like some new game plus thing, and it'll have stuff I haven't done yet, or what? I think we're, we're, we're about what are the ending? Is this the? I know that thing is up here somewhere, or maybe it's not time yet. Oh, I got two more days for Fang. Mm. I think we should do our stabilizer. A maximum dice. We have our time limit now. Yes. Well, if I end up uh, starting uh, like New Game Plus or whatever, guess what? I'm not going to reread all the stuff I've already read. I know that's hard to believe, but... <laughs> New content only. New content only. Let me know what I asked. It doesn't matter. Oh, I've got, like, full energy. When did I get full energy? I am so paying attention. You're just saying yes? Oh, you're just saying yes to whatever. Oh, okay. I understand that. Obviously, we we only used one hundred percent positive for this. to do why don't I wait no hmm oh right because they're not on the system 
Oh. Uh, that's dangerous, huh? Mm, we'll, we'll extract it tomorrow when we have better dice. I think we can get some encrypted keys with the uh, threes we have. It does matter. What? What do you mean it does matter? Oh, wait. Now oh, you want to know? Uh-oh. A glint like a light traveling along the edge of a wave fills your eyes. Then the blade follows, a long head with two dead sockets, flipping towards you in silence. You freeze, hoping it will pass you by, hoping that it will not simply slice through you like air. The heart, or the blade head nears, slides past you. Almost. It nicks you, grazes you. You're desperate to cry out, to call out. But you hold your silence, and simply watch the blind eyes of the killer glide past, empty of all thought. Then the blade winks into the dark, and you are alone again. Now you cry out. Yikes. Let me pick the thing. My pick's a key down! Oh, there we go. That's all that's up here, I'm pretty sure. Anything on this side? Nope. Oh, I didn't need nine keys. I just needed three. Oh, that, that circle thing. I thought I needed three for each one. Each branch. Ugh. I'm about to be like, where the hell am I getting nine keys? This branch has been unlocked. Help our friend! A1 mainframe, station central mainframe. Slice hardware? Forget hacking the system, killer has to die. If you can slice the branch connections, the mainframe will shut down. Fring navigator. Hmm, that'll go for killer is dead. The killer protocol has been running for long enough. Breaking the mainframe's final connections will end the protocol. Or loop branches. With access to the branches, you could redirect them to form a loop, isolating the mainframe with killer inside, but freeing navigator. In theory. Ooh. Etch a killer. The killer protocol can be isolated without being destroyed. A loop of connections would lock it into a closed system. Interesting that it's easier to kill killer than it is to catch killer because there's more there's more circles for catch. That's very interesting. It makes me want to do the catch one because it, it's tougher to do. Although I uh, like I was saying about like the ship, there's probably multiple achievements for doing the different options. Uh oh. Hmm. That's all I can do today. Nice. Oh, 
Obviously, I'm gonna do the one that gives me 100% positive. Alright. Wait, why does that upgrade? Huh? What? Does interface have an ability for that? Interface. Hmm? You didn't know it's give double data work? It doesn't say it the upgrades to the dice, does it? I mean, okay. Wait, I'll be selected again. I mean, if it's gonna give me a free upgrade, okay. You find the data, but sitting right beside it, there is a cache of cryo. You take both. Too easy! Oh, I'm a thief! Not bad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not, not bad. So darn. Get feel better soon. This is done now, right? Hmm, I'd rather- I want to free my friend first. Cough forever. Yeah, I'll recover eventually. Oh, it keeps upgrading. That's cool. Catch or kill more. As you blink into the cloud, you see the last flickers of life from the mainframe. The vast machine once ran the whole station, spanned it up, directed and processed the flow of energy, water, and data, fed the lives of thousands of people. Now it is finally dead. Navigator is beside you, and you both look out at the perfect ring that encircled you both, woven from the data branches that once fed the mainframe. You see a glint al wait. Oh wait, you see a glint along its edge, and that familiar blade like head rises to the surface, like the cresting fin of a shark, and then slips into the loop again. All that you can see of Killer's body after that is slight thickening of the loop, and that thickening begins to travel around on a long and slow sojourn sojourn that will last it forever. What the heck's a sojourn? A meanderer? A, a, a walk around, or, or like a sauntering or something. That's my first guess. I have no idea. A temporary stay, apparently. I did pronounce it correctly. It is sojourn. Apparently, means a temporary stay. But if it lasted forever, how is it a temporary stay? Like, huh? Stay somewhere, somewhere temporarily? But how will it last for if forever if it's a soldier? It, that seems contradictory. Maybe there's another, another uh, definition. That somehow means the opposite? That seems unlikely. That seems unlikely. Well, uh, I guess I won't question it. I am surprised at you, says Navigator, drifting faintly around you in a lazy orbit as if to shake off their imprisonment. Miller had been wandering blind for so long. Did you not think to end them forever? You'll not kill another being? Didn't you kill Maywick? We killed Maywick. Maywick didn't count. It was self-defense. This isn't self-defense, right? Even though a killer would totally kill them. Let's be naive. Perhaps they can be saved. I'm... Damn it! Don't call me out for being naive! God damn it! 
How dare you? Only I can say I'll be naive. You can't, you can't say that to me. You are naive. They're a killer by nature. Look at what they did to their own home. Navigator gazes into the darkness. God damn it. This place was their domain and prison, and they had followed their directives for the many decades they roamed here. They cut the threads of the mainframe, executed its administrator AIs, and then kept slicing. At some point, they cut away their own ability to see, to sense, to taste, to speak. And yet they kept cutting, not until only those three threads remained, from millions that once thrummed here. Only their blindness and chance kept them from making those final three fatal cuts. I mean, given enough time, they eventually they would finally, you know, reach them and cut those three and that'd be it. It just hadn't happened yet, but it was going to happen eventually. There is a ceaseless violence in the kind of system that creates beings like these. Or like this. Those that will execute commands endlessly. Even to their own destruction. Navigator looks to you for your thoughts. Hmm. I will not continue the violence! The system you float in is one built to violence. You would be naive to believe otherwise. Navigator turns away. Navigator's like, look at this fool. Well, at least I wasn't living in a vending machine. <laughs> you watch the data points of the station spin around you, blending with the fixed stars. There's something satisfying about finally wrenching the last threads of control from the central point. It was little more than a ghost by the time you reached it, but this place deserves to be haunted by better ideas than a totalizing system of control. Navigator floats beside you. It is free now. This station no longer presents a hazard for illegal entities like me. They turn to you, their face a cloud of shimmering light. In fact, in time, perhaps it can be a refuge. A refuge. That sounds like something of value. Something worth building. A dark shape passes all across your vision. A distant curve of something like smoke or oil. A fluid, shifting tank of total darkness. The Greenway, says Navigator, following your line of sight. It was cut off at the moment of the collapse. The hunter or killer could never reach it. Now, it is closed off to us, separated from the cloud. Is it dead? It may be totally dark, or perhaps some other pr old protocols are isolated there. Navigator turns to you. And we have now seen what decades of isolation can do to a protocol. If we could extract an Axis cipher... They pause and then blink out of existence. You freeze, shocked! But a moment later, they reappear with a glowing polygon of data. Here, a cipher you need. You take it, still shocked. I am not used to being free. To be able to move and explore... And extract without fear. Without limits. Navigator does a little twirl. This will take some getting used to. Twirl, twirl. Navigator uh, seems happy now. Thank you for this gift. They whirl their spheres around you. The entities of this station will always be friends to you, sleeper. Thank you. It is true that mutual need is required for friendship. But I must admit I had not considered the value of offering assistance without personal gain. I will think on that. Mm. Navigator loops around you rapidly, suddenly eager to test their newfound freedom. But first I will explore. Perhaps there are still intelligences that hid themselves as I did, encased in simple systems, cut off. Navigator glows. I should like to free them. And with that, they drift away, flickering, glowing, oh wait, flickering, glowing, then shifting so rapidly you lose sight of them among the glittering rim of the eye. You feel a pang of jealousy, free, without a body to weigh you down, or fear to limit you. How must it feel? Your eyes fall on the greenway and its secrets, though perhaps that can wait until after you have celebrated this victory. Ooh. New model. Nope, just a different color. 
I can change colors, Kaduna. What's up, what's up? How's it going, by the way? I got colors. Wow. It has colors. I can do lots of things. Whoa. 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 Well, I was just doing this one for now. I've got five different ones. This one here is the default, though. This is the default, the blue one. The blue best color. It, green's nice. Green's pretty nice. I've got them as a cat cat treat. Well, channel points are the, what they're called, redeems. You can change colors. I need to add more color varieties, right? These days, I gotta, I gotta go make some more versions. I'll have like a bajillion versions, okay? Only 30 different varieties. Uh, probably not that many. Well, I'm free now. Oh, nothing to why here anymore. So, how long do I have for this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. Hmm. What else do I want to do before I potentially uh, reach an ending? And I think I think it's gonna happen. You made it. Model now. The color variation, yes. You can just change those in the settings. Oh yeah, it's time for Fang. Let's do it. When you enter the service dock, Fang is already set up, crouched among stacks of equipment. He is leaning over a terminal, bathed in a blue glow. He looks totally at home. So he basically looks exactly like the uh, illustration. Sleeper! What do you think? Turns out not everyone in Haven Age is set against me. A couple of my old systems pals managed to ship me some of my old gear. He gestures at the pile of blinking hardware. Nice kit. Fang does a mock bow. What are we looking at? One massive smoking gun. He raises his eyebrows. Fang beckons me over. He has a set of scans on the wastes on his terminal, with heat maps of activity overlaid. A chunk of the derelict rim is blotchy with bright red and orange marks. Does this look like a wasteland to you? Fang shakes his head. There's hundreds of Conway machines out there, all lined up in concealed hangars and a whole underground facility to support them. Ardent has got a crew out there, putting them together. They must have shipped them in piece by piece. Through the shipyard, ready for assembly out here. Why? They are planning something. No one needs hundreds of heavy-duty reclamation drones to run this kind of operation. Maybe Harding masked this whole thing as an effort to clean up the wastes. But there's no way this is about pulling scrap off the eye. Fang looks worried. And why is Conway in the mix? I bet no one in Haven Age knows another corporation is setting up on the station. They aren't stupid either. These scans are, are the best info I can get. The wastes are cut off from the eye's cloud of networks and the greenway is a total dark zone. No data can come in or out. We can't hack them? We can't from here. He turns and winks. That's why I'm going to pay them a visit. Oh. You forget. Haven Age come in and out of there all cycle. I should be able to get in. As long as no one I know sees me. He grimaces pay playfully. But I need you on the outside to help disable security systems and cut me a pathway through. There's no cloud access. access but if I can get inside, I can open up nodes on their network and we can work in tandem. It's a massive facility, buried deep down there. Miles of corridor and ventways wrapped around cargo bays and hangars. So it'll take more than a few cycles to work through it. But as long as you can keep them off my back, I know I can rip what we need out of there. He pulls a handful of ripper worms from his pocket and hands them to you. He's always got more of these. These are the last of my little helpers I managed to salvage, so make them count. I modified them slightly. This time they'll feed their data threads back into the system that they are tunneling into, creating a nasty little feedback loop. We run it just like we did with the agents. Hack the nodes, I ping to locate the ports for the security system. Then slot the worms in those systems and let them go to town. He points to a fuzzy silhouette of the buried facility on the terminal. Here's the entryway. This is where you can get access and slot the first worm. 
That'll fry their perimeter systems and get me past the first cordon. What? A recording? Cordon? What I need from you is to kick your eye. Or, not kick. I was reading the kick in the second line. <laughs> Probably, I guess. Never mind. What are you never minding? I wonder if we can just get away with doing any shrine we get. Mm, maybe. Maybe nobody else will be playing because they'll be too busy crashing. A sequel coming soon? True. It is coming soon. Sometime this year. Wouldn't that be cool? Hmm. No, I didn't read this yet. I got stuck on kick. What I need from you is to keep your eyes on the facility after you kick things off. You see? You know what? You see me pop up a security system? A server bank? You need to break in and slot a ripper to disable it as soon as you can. If I don't? Ben gives you a hard look. You miss a system? You wait too long? They are going to find me. Simple as that. He claps you on the shoulder. I need you focused on this one, so I'm going to let you fire the starting gun. I wouldn't, won't go until you slot that first worm. I'll leave a tracker running on the terminal here, so come back here if you want to see my progress. He affectionately pats the top of the screen. Got it. It does sound risky, but, you know, might as well. Don't worry. You can run rings around their protocols. I've seen it. Ben gets up. It's all in place. You just need to make your own preparations, then slot that worm. He stretches. Just don't wait too long. I'm getting bored of all this sneaking around. Once I'm inside, I'll get the proof we need to end this whole thing. No matter what. He crouches to check the terminal. We can't take longer than six cycles on this thing. Remember that. He stands up. Oh, and one last thing. He lowers his voice. If I get caught, or you can't reach me, or we run out of time, there's one thing I need you to do. What? You take whatever I have managed to pull at that point, all that data, and you slot that stuff straight into the relay I've set up here. He points to a pile of servers and terminals, hooked into the dock with cables as thick as your arm. I repurposed the dock's SOS broadcast system to beam out whatever you put in it. Anyone with a terminal... A slate or a server on the eye will see it. That means Haven Age, Yadagon, the hub, everyone. No matter what, Harding isn't snaking away this time. He grins. I've got a bit more to do here, but the moment you slot that first worm, I'll make my move. He gives you a parting smile and turns back to the terminal. The nerves hit you as you make your way out of the service dock. Time to prepare yourself. Ooh. Hmm. As soon as I do that first ripper worm, huh? I'll probably go back next day because I don't know if I'll need dice inputs. We've got a greenway cipher. The cipher burns away as it is slotted, the data sparking like a lit touch paper. What has been unlocked? The greenway roils beneath you like a silt choked river. You could probably be in and out of most shrines, grade 5, within 25 minutes. Honestly, yeah. Probably. Maybe not... Maybe, well, like... The one up near Sanctuary is annoying, so maybe not that one. I think most of the other ones are pretty quick, though. I gotta, I gotta admit though, I don't remember each, what each one's individual puzzle was or whatever. But both the ones in the wilds are pretty good. Things are getting interesting. Yeah! I think Trace's slow starter mostly it's on the surface. True. I think that's my least favorite shrine. Like, uh, What do you mean I gotta pull all these stupid levers? If what Navigator said was true, then no one has accessed these networks since the collapse. The hunter and killer protocols have never set foot here. Never cleared out the intelligences and systems. 
The why then, you wonder, does it look so dark? Is it just that the bit rot has set in, the entropy of systems reducing everything to shadows and light? You watch as the slotted cipher fizzles in the one open, distorted gateway on this entire rim of the station. It flickers and winks out, and then you are falling into the flow. A river of swirling darkness. You are spun by it, twisted by it, lost in it. It's not that the Greenway was hiding in the darkness. It is made of darkness. It is filled by this substance, this process, this swarm. Now you are among it. You notice that, wait, now that you are, now you are among it, you notice that a swarm is exactly what it is. A billion individuals moving in a flow. There is no network map here, no nodes and threads, only a storm of interchangeable points, shifting configuration endlessly. Then you see them, a figure, turned away, the only bright spot in the dark river. You push closer through the storm. Gardener? Broccoli head! Ingrown farm administrator? Huh. They are facing away. At least you think so. They are so fractured, so overgrown that it is hard to tell. Even from this distance, you can see their flesh is moving, flowing. You watch, silent, as they stoop and reach down. In their hand is a dark shape, and with twisted fingers, they press it down into the loam of data beneath them, pushing it through this trembling soil. They're like planting a seed. Then they move away, go a little further, and repeat the process, as if they were sowing a field. Yep. You push forward, but somehow, despite their slow and deliberate speed, they move faster, and they quickly fade into the storm. Huh. You reach the point where they planted the object and look down. There it is, a glassy, shifting polygon with something inside. You reach down and pick it up. It is cold, but it thrums with energy. You look towards the path of the figure, but they are long gone. When you blink out of the cloud, back to the leaves and the dappled light of the greenway, you hold a seed in your hand. I do? Oh, gardener seed. A seed. You need to find somewhere safe to plant this gift. It's just always dark here. I thought it was going to illuminate and then it was going to be like the first area. I guess it's just always dark here. We're safe to plant this seed. Still upgrade required. Do, 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 do. Hmm, maybe there if you clear that clear it out. Oh yeah, I was going to do the Conway thing the next day in case I needed to uh, use some uh, dice. I'm to go to tomorrow! Next day, let's go! Hey. Why are you stuck on sunbath? End cycle! End cycle! Complete active scenes. Uh. 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 Castor. I gotta do that, huh? Okay. Rophelia! Toba! What's up? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, actually, the the one uh, down in the Ancient Isles with the big maze is probably annoying too. 
Once we have to press all those switches to open up treasure things. I think I wouldn't bother with that. I think I just get the stuff in the main area. When you arrive at Lem and Mina's unit, Castor is already waiting outside, leaning in beside the door. Forgive me, sleeper, but Silas is already buzzing with news of the breach. I was expecting you. I don't like you tracking me. True, but will this work? Don't worry. The breach cannot be traced to the specific IDs I am about to create. Castor reaches into a pocket and produces a sleek green and white hand terminal. The data, please. What is that? Something I acquired from Silas while you were busy on that ship. Castor pushes up his glasses. I haven't been waiting for you the entire time. You hand over a drive with the data and Castor fishes around for a converter cable to hook it up. He slots it into the terminal and after some worrying, a set of two transparent films marked with numeric sequences are produced. Two tickets to an uncertain future. Castor smiles to himself. A child with go with them, of course. He pockets them. These are yours. But first, he holds out a white cube. Your side of the deal. What is it? Something to help us make use of you. He passes you the square and you rest it in your palm. A small, white, perfect cube. Suddenly you feel a sharp pain and flinch. The cube jumps from your hand and rattles along the walkway. You look at Castor apologetically. Astor smiles. Not to worry. It has done its job. Now it is y for you to do yours. You look down and see a tiny pinprick in the center of your palm. Nothing sinister. Castor puts the terminal away. This way we can keep track of you and the side real horizon. I mean, I didn't technically agree to do this. I didn't say I agreed to do this, but I went and got the data, so... That's kind of agreeing to do this, even if I didn't verbally say it. Hey, Pie Thief! What's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? You can do that one easily. Well, good. I'm glad she can do the, the maze one easily. You, you, you show off. You show off. Whatever you need to do. Excellent. Castor hands her the transparent films, and you see shimmering portraits of you and Lem flickering beneath the surface. Go, give them the good news. And he reaches across and buzzes the unit. So Mina doesn't need to take it? Is it because she's a kid? Does she get a free pass? You weren't saying it because of the Sea of Thieves, sorry. What? can't believe it. Lem slides open the door, half-dressed in his gear. Laper, what brings you up here? Come in. He beckons you inside. You look to the side, expecting to see Castor, but the wall is empty. The unit is cleaner, better organized than last time. Lem sits at the thin bar and gestures for you to sit. Nina's with some of the local kids. Someone has started doing lessons down the way. She seems to like it. I guess we'll sit. You sit at the bar. What's up, sleeper? Hmm. Will we play for time or just... We should just tell him. I have some news! Out with it, then, Rem laughs. I have sealess IDs for us. You have... Lem freezes. How? He blinks rapidly as if to wipe you from his vision. Does that mean... Yep. Lem stands up and paces around the unit. We have to pack. He starts laughing. Holy shit, we have to pack. He turns back to you, smiling. How the hell did you swing this, sleeper? Uh, a friend helped. Well, thank you, friend. You show him the ID films, and he whistles at the portraits. Impressive stuff. He pats you on the shoulder. You should stay until Mina gets home. We can tell her together. Sure. The buzzer goes. That'll be her. Em gets up and opens the door, and Mina, a bundle of energy and life, rushes into the room. Robot! She shouts. Then picks her up. Mina, you won't believe what they brought us. He flash her the passes, and she looks confused. You're going away after all, Meanie. He lifts her up above her head. On that big, beautiful ship. Mina screams and Lem laughs. 
He puts Mina down and she runs over to you and hugs your legs. I love you, robot. She says quietly. Though only you can hear her. I love you too. You're so adorable. A while and a while later, when you leave, you don't even think to check for Castor by the door until it's too late. You stop and turn, halfway down the walkway. But there's nothing there. Even that little white cube is gone. So you keep walking, back through the low end, deep in thought, excited and scared, all at once. Interesting. A running game achievement unlocked. Did whatever it took to get that chicken. That's right. Did whatever it took. Sounds like I murdered somebody, but okay. That's right. I did whatever was necessary. You're cool. Ah, you're proper cool. Very cool. Very proper. Wow. Very awesome. And out of time. I was saying it because, you know... Oh! Oh, me. I'll, I'll nod my head and pretend I know. Let's get some food. Never did find this guy's mushrooms. Oh, wait. What am I doing now? Oh, uh, let's do the fang stuff. Oh wait, it's in the Y. Get in there! Plotting this first worm will allow Fang access into the facility, huh? The worm tunnels in and starts looping data through the node. The Conway facility opens up to you. Godspeed, Fang. As you slot the worm, a thread jumps out of the facility. It unspools in front of you, releasing its data like ink and water. Sleeper. Fang's voice crackles through. Moving in. Nodes, then ports. A whir of interference. Slot the worms. Timer starts now. Stay safe. The thread dissipates. You are on your own now. On sec F1. Ah. must be struggling to get through. First layer of security, a ring of doors around the central facility. Time to open them up. Let's do it! I was right about needing the, uh... Dice, wasn't I? The Ripper Room creates its feedback loop, overloading the security system. Ooh, I'm not gonna be able to do it all in one day. On sec S2. Ooh. Both the S layer nodes need to be extracted before the port will open. Is there time? Depends on what the dice I get. I got, I'm just lucky that I got these ones. The inner S layer security is more complex. One access point won't be enough to locate the port. The second layer controls the Conway drones tasked with patrolling the hangars. Ripper Room fries the drone's network link. Now they can't report anything. Ah, oh, man. Can't do that one today. We can do that one. So we'll do that one. How many nodes are on this layer? You've never seen such tight security before. What do I need for the other ones? I don't know. That's all I can do today, though, man. Ah, Conway Extraction. The timer on the terminal shows how many cycles you have left to get the data you need. Come on, Fang! That's all I can do today, though. How long do I have for the ship? Ooh, I should have time to get Fang's stuff done. Nap time! Oh, 
Although it kind of depends on if I get the uh, dice I need. Got some music now. You're at six. All right. Three nodes to locate the final port. Then Fang will be in. Not much time left. Ooh, they're both sixes. This node is buried deep in the wastes. This has to be the final security layer. Hold on, Fang. That's right. Hold on, man. This final layer controls surveillance. With this down, Fang should be able to control the facility's cameras. The Ripper Room chews through camera control. The moment it does, a thread shoots from the facility. A cloud! A thread from the facility cuts through the cloud like a hairline crack of light. That's it. The final layer of security broken. Somewhere, buried in the depths of the station, Feng is in control. He's slicing into the camera control circuits and piping out the result. A thread flickers and unravels into an image. A scene, two figures in a room. One sat, the other pacing. The pacing figure resolves into Harding, the unmistakable superior posture, a shock of gray hair. The second figure's features don't seem to resolve. They are vague, unformed. A problem with the data, perhaps? You look closer. Then you see it. The figure is a proxy. Perhaps you should have expected it from Conway, a corporation whose very existence is owed to automation. The proxy is a machine, designed to be piloted by remote connection, someone elsewhere in the system puppeteering it with their own body, speaking so it may speak. The proxy sits impassively, or the Conway executive that is piloting them does. From the distant safety of some ship or orbital colony, perhaps. We can move forward, there is no doubt, Ardine is saying. The reclamation teams are almost ready, and after that I will make the declaration. Nothing has to change. The proxy leans forward, its movement stilted, uneven, as if its body was being refracted through water. But things must change, Ardine. We need further assurances. I have been informed of a breach in one of the closed networks in the low end. You have been careless. Harding waves the accusation away. We have been stretched. A breach was detected, yes. But no data of value was lost. Our board is concerned, Harding. A drop in our value would be unwelcome at this time. The proxy leans back, its posture dominant. If the reclamation of, reclamation of AE-1 is contested, then we could be drawn into a compromising legal position. Ardeen approaches the proxy. There will be no contest. Not from Solheim, who cannot muster a defense. Not from Haven Age, who will fall into line below me. He crouches in front of the seated figure, eye to eye. And the people of this station? Refugees, gangs, spacers, all either opportunists or degenerates. Damn. He's so mean. He's so mean. Haven Age is no, lo lo no longer strong. No longer united. No one here believes in Erlin's vision, nor has the strength to enact it. I sat across from him at the negotiating table. He was forceful, eager, weakened by his ideological convictions, perhaps, but a great man nonetheless. This place no longer deserves to bear his name. The eye is crippled. It cannot survive. It is a ruin filled with squatters and outlaws. They will be lucky if it still spins in a hundred cycles. Harding stands. You will move forward with the reclamation because otherwise you will lose your advantage in the system. Without your advantage, you will lose claims on the remaining pal pal palladium? Palladium, I guess? I Without the palladium, your factories will go dark. He pauses. Do I need to continue? One moment, comes the response from the proxy, and its head drops to its chest. He's like, hold on, I need to discuss this with the other board members. Can I put you on hold? That's basically what he just did. He just put him on hold. 
That's, that's the outer space version to put you on hold, huh? Harding steps back and paces once more, awaiting the discussion taking place elsewhere in the system. You watch Harding as he paces, as he considers his future. What goes on within a mind like that? In the mind of a man who would burn all those around him for a path to some imagined golden end. The proxy lifts its head. We are happy to proceed. We will legally claim the station formerly known as Solheim AE-1 as salvage within six cycles. What? Even ages to assist with the transport of the illegal residents to Conway housing and labor facilities. What? You can't just decide my home is salvage and then force me into your labor facilities. That sounds like slavery, honestly. No way, we, we'll give you housing, uh, corporation towns, uh-oh. You a citizen sleeper pro? I'm a sleeper right now. What's up, what's happening? How's it going, Pyro? How you doing tonight? Maybe the sleeper citizens were the friends we made along the way. Mmm, maybe. The proxy judders to its feet. Conway will also claim 70% of the raw output of the reclamation process after losses have been accounted for. Hardy nods. I accept. The proxy reaches out to shake his hand like a marionette, and then the recording loops. You watch it play out a second time, gripped by a horrified fascination. There's a bluntness to the conversation, to its blatant disregard for humans as anything other than objects. Things to be moved, to be used... To be fed into structures, crushed, and losses accounted for in the cells of tables, the margins of ledgers. You realize now that you are no different than anyone else on his station in the eyes of the people in that room, and those like them. Each body here can be recast as a piece of property, a tool, an expense, an acceptable loss. In one moment they can be named a citizen, celebrated, protected, and then another, the very idea of citizenship can be used against them. That is what it means to live in proximity to a system like this. No longer, not while the eye spins. You gather the recording, pack it into a polygon of purest light. Then you drift down into the service dock like a falling leaf and find the relay. It only takes a second to place that polygon of data, that recording, into the relay system Fang prepared. And then you watch it as it bursts out, a web of threads, heading out into the black, to every networked device on the eye. Let them see what power makes of a man. Ooh. Icebreaker achievement unlocked. Crack the toughest security system on the eye. I mean, I mean, it was pretty easy to crack, but okay. I slept the whole time, just like Chloe. What do you think, Kat? Eh, she's not in here. She's somewhere. No doubt sleeping, though. What are you profile staring for? I've, uh, I've hacked the lethal. Got lucky dice? Yeah, I did. It just so happened to get the dice I needed. To be able to do it in, like, two days. And depending on what dice you get, which is random, it could have taken more than two cycles. A cycle, a cycle it is a day. That's what they call days in this game. They call them cycles. It only took two cycles. Three upgrade points. Hmm. You, you can get an ability to re-roll your dice once per cycle. So if you have that ability and you got crappy dice, you could like try, see if you get lucky and re-roll it. All well, cryo actions are discounted with 20% is an obvious choice. That requires three points. The plus two for everything is three points. Only got one upgrade point now. I don't care about the energy recovery really though. Because, because, wait for Feng to return. I don't think I can wait for Feng to return. You got that ship coming, though. Huh? Hmm. 
Hmm. Might have to wait for that. I think there's anything else I can do there. Hmm. There's nothing up here to get. Mm. That's all my dice for to that. You want to? Well, I guess it is a free bum stream. You can do what you want. David Age in Crisis. Building is chaotic. Most of it is in total lockdown. No one will give you a straight answer about Fang or Harding. I'll buy some food. Now it's 12 for 12 cryo instead of 60. Hmm. I think we're waiting for the ship thing. For I think we're just waiting for that thing to fill. Gimbal out. I didn't finish working on this though, did I? Ha 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 ha. Ah, bliss ship mechanic. You show capsule, spacer, sleeping burrows. Rent a capsule. The only place to sleep on the hub. Act off a colony ship and wheel welded to the ring. They're surprisingly expensive to rent. Uh, that'd be one heck of a view, wouldn't it? Was ship mechanic on the hub. Alright. No way, Moritz. You take those substandard filters back to the shit heels who sold you them. Uh oh. You hear the voice echoing out of the bay as you pass. And moments later, someone who you assume is Moritz drifts out with it, dragging a pallet of filter cartridges by a tether. Hey, you out there. The same voice echoes out of the entrance. Looking for work? Who, me? Everyone in this station is looking for work. Get in here. The voice is coming from someone shorter than you expected. He is floating in the microgravity of the docking bay. Inside a half deconstructed life support unit that looks like it might have exploded at some point. He points a wrench in your direction. You see? Anything about these? Or wait, not you see. Uh, uh, wait, wait. Where did I get C from? I don't even see C. You know anything about these things? He doesn't wait for an answer. Scratch that. Just help me with the casing. Sure, I'll help you. Alright then. He definitely moves around the unit, making space for you beside the central seam in the dented case. Just take a grip here and lift out and up. Then I can get in and unbolt it. He whacks the unit with the wrench. The whole thing is twisted to shit. You dig your fingers under the casing and lift it away. The metal squealing from the force. She puts her hands under, spinning the wrench to slip out of the out the bolts, catching them in her other hand when they spiral free. All good. The casing lifts off, revealing the ornate piping of the unit's interior. She whistles at the mess of ducks and filters. By the way, everyone calls me Bliss. She pats you on the shoulder, offering little in the way of an explanation. 
What do you do here? Repairs, fit ups, tear downs. Bliss starts pushing and pulling at the ductwork, looking for fractured pipes. We haggle for contracts, but the good ones get snapped up quick by the bigger bays. So here I am trying to get this M2 unit running again for one of the freelance tugs. Small time stuff. Hold this. He rips out a ribbed pipe and hands it to you like a freshly caught fish. We turn stuff around fast and neat, and maybe we get a chance at landing something bigger. Something starts hissing in the unit, and Bliss quiet, quiet, quietens it with a precise whack. Ah! Violence solves everything, after all. You stayed there because you're cool. Probably cool! That's right. You're very cool. You're very probable. Wow. But to be honest with you, the way things are going, I can already see the other crews licking their lips, ready to take this place over. He looks up at you. I'm almost out of luck. What happened? Long story. Some people just can't keep promises. He keeps working, twisting aside pipes with care. There we are. Liz pulls her hand from deep with inside the unit. And out it comes, clutching a lumpen cube, scorched black. This thing must have overloaded and popped half of itself out the side. You both duck down to the side of the unit and spot the exit wound. Its edges fringed with more scorch marks. Grab me a replacement converter from the racks, will you? Head to the rack. You kick off from the unit and drift over to the wall racks, where a catalog of parts sits secured in clamps. Colored tape and scrawled notes flutter across the wall. A complex organizational system of Bliss's own design. Or just a big mess. You try to pick out the right part. Uh, she asked for a converter. Which one the? Uh, let's try the M2. You grab the part and push back to the unit. Liz holds out an arm and you pass it over. The converter spinning gently as she leaves your hand. Perfect. You passed. Uh, I just got lucky. I had a 50-50 shot. <laughs> All I did was get lucky. She straightens up from the unit. That is, if you want to work here. Bliss rubs her hands clean, looking down at her palms. Truth is, I need a hand here. My partner skipped out on me and left me with a whole mess. You seem like you might at least be better at spotting a clean air filter than Moritz. I'll consider it. Wait, she frowns at the racks. That's not all of it. My old business partner. They rinsed the place, emptied the accounts. To bid for, to bid for jobs, we need to put down deposits, bring in parts, pay tug fees. For that... She looks nervous, embarrassed. We need chits. An investment? Exactly. Partners. Straight split. Liz settles herself against the unit and looks off into the distance. I guess I look pretty stupid. Here I am asking any random passerby to be my business partner. No offense. She manages a smile. Probably possible to get wrong. Woo! If I have to do a second playthrough, which I think I will. I have the feeling there's multiple endings. Well, we'll t I'll totally remember to pick the other converter and see if we succeed. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna remember to pick the opposite of every choice I've made. No, I'm not gonna remember. I'm not gonna remember every choice I've made. It is pretty weird. Gives me a sideways look. Don't tease me. Liz goes back to working on the unit. Look, it's no pressure. You find the money or you find someone who has. Or you just forget the whole thing. Up to you. She gestures for you to help her refit the casing and you both slide it back into place. I think I'm good to wrap this one up for now. But if you're into it, come back and we can bid on a new contract. Something to get our teeth into. Something that pays. She gives you a serious look. You can trust me. I don't say this stuff lightly. You kick away from the bay, propelling yourself back to the handholds at the entrance. You slip out with a wave, and as you do, some someone slips back in. You hear Blitz as you glide down the passageway. Moritz, I swear to God, if those filters aren't clean... You smile. Seems like this could be interesting. I definitely can't do your side quest before the, the this thing's done. There's the thing, if there's multiple endings, it'll be within the final DLC. Is the final DLC out yet? Aren't they working on it? Shouldn't it be out by now since they're working on the second game? Eighty! 
And that's with the 20%. It was originally a hundred. A scam or an opportunity? Well, this seems solid enough, and this might be your best chance to get in on the hub's repair trade. I don't think I have time to do her side quest. So I think I will. Uh, the game will be ending when this is filled. But gimbal lounge, spacer bar. Buy a spacer beyond. The gimbal sells itself on its spinning sphere, which claims to produce therapeutic gravitational effects. It doesn't, but they sell f sell food. <laughs> you show capsules? Oh, those things. Hmm, I might try that out, but I want to use my dice up first. It's all out, and I don't know if you can skip the two before. If it gives you safe once you can go back to... Who knows? It's kind of the fun of a first playthrough. You just go... Find stuff out, right? Looks like we'll have time for Fang's next step, though. Ship shape. Do 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 do. Obviously, one hundred percent positive for that. Oh, that just started the clock. I see. Hmm. I rent that. Do I sleep there? I don't know if you can skip to four if it gives you save points you can go back to. I can't remember if it did the did not or if you did another playthrough because of the DLC or because of the missable achievements. Maybe both. You hand over the chits and get a passkey for capsule zero four what five one. I'm to find which of the identical birds is yours. Tiny sleeping birth. Oh yeah, you can sleep here. <laughs> Good nap. Or to play as a different class. I don't think those matter. They only matter in the beginning. Ooh, we got the music playing. I mean, something's going on. Things, I think. Yeah. Kings Bay Haven Age Department. Oh my! Bang grins at you as the bay door slides open. Above, in the rest of the building, people are busy, frightened. They speak in hushed tones and organize endless meeting after endless meeting. Haven Age have avoided a full blown crisis for now, but change is coming. Bang is in good spirits and bundles you inside before you even have a chance to greet him. That was the slickest operation this station has seen. He hugs you firmly. You made my job easy. He shakes you by the shoulders. I'm so proud. And he smiles. I got to watch through the cameras as the Haven Age security that weren't in on it assaulted the station. Bang smiled. One of them straight up just whacked Harding with their pistol. It was beautiful. Hey. They have him? He's being held, yeah. He looks around. I think the idea is to use him as leverage with Conway to get them to back off. Maybe they'll exile him when they are done. Or hand him over to some core authority. Feng shrugs. Now I know he won't be an issue. I'm going to be focusing on systems for a bit. He shakes his head. Thing is, that's my actual job. He points to the ceiling. The people upstairs weren't so happy, though. They've been fielding questions about the state of the eye right and left since the recording got out. People are scared. I'm not surprised. Yeah, this whole thing hasn't won me many fans in the administration. But I think in the end they'll agree that outing Harding was worth it. Whatever the methods. He touches a stack of hardware. The eye is old, and it was never meant to run like this. The master control points at Erlin and Haven Age installed. They keep it spinning from the rim. That isn't ideal. 
But if you are asking me if the eye will stop spinning next cycle? No. He smiles. And me? And a ton of other skilled people will be working to stop it happening in the cycle after that. Ardine's problem was that he didn't believe in people. He believed in systems and their ability to shape the world around them. Thing squeezes your shoulder. But as far as I am concerned, people should be the ones running the systems, not the other way around. Anyway, Feng raps on the side of the terminal. I know you didn't come here for a lecture. Or didn't come down here for a lecture. My tracker! I haven't forgotten. He produces a th thumbnail drive. I managed to finish that code solution I showed you. It's a modified ripper worm, one made to deactivate that tracker of yours. But in the time since I got back, I added something extra. That tracker of yours doesn't just show SNARP where you are. It transmits data about the state of your body, your current condition. My worm won't just deactivate it. It'll edit that data to tell SNARP your body is irreparably damaged. DNR, do not retrieve. He grins widely. Pretty smart, right? That's perfect. Perfect. Yeah, they'll think I'm dead. So then there should never be a bounty on me ever again or anything. This slotted already. You take the drive and hold it in your hand. Then you close your eyes and open up your access ports. Take down your defenses. Ooh. Ooh. That sounds exciting. The worm immediately enters your closed network. It whips through it, taking things with it as it goes. The moment they are gone, you forget they were ever there. They just blink out of existence. A second later, it is done. You open your eyes. How do you feel? Asks Fang, a little nervously. <coughs> Fang smiles widely. Well, you are free, sleeper. He claps you on the shoulder. Fang lets the word free hang in the air a little before he continues. Seems like it might be finally time for a celebration. Fang wraps his arm around you. Dennis still owes us those drinks. He laughs and you join in. And later, when you leave, you feel deeply thankful for having such a friend. As you walk away from the building, you look up at the wide curve of the eye, up at the hub and the other rim beyond it. The whole thing twinkles with lights, and it seems impossible to see it as anything other than breathtakingly beautiful. It feels, in that moment, like something eternal. That doesn't mean it can, or even should, last forever, or that it will never change, fade, or decay. It simply means that in this moment, this place has a future, and it is one that you know, deeply and truly, is worth protecting. That's exciting. We're, we're tracker free now. I'm sure we still need stabilizer, though, so, you know. Look at all those quests! I completely forgot about Rabia. Wait, what the hell is that? Who is that? Oh, that's the mushrooms. There's like 5 billion quests. There's no way you can complete all the quests in one playthrough. Especially if there's some time limited ones, like the side reel shit. There's like no way. Oh, I can't do the... Keep two dice saving when condition is breaking? I don't think I've been to breaking, have I? Not if you get bad dice anyway. God damn it. I don't want give me, get, get, get out of here, bad dice. What would I like to do with the rest of my dice? Help her repair her ship because we're nice. Ankita stranded the Mercedes. You're not stranded no more. Get out of here. Ankita is crouched in the computing core of the Ambergris, swearing to herself when you enter. That's right, Ambergris, not Ambergarge, okay? He doesn't look up. 
These shits completely ruined the core's connectors when they cut it. He holds up a thick fistful of ragged wires. The ship mine they ripped won't even be usable without replacing these. He throws the bundle of wires across the room. Amateurs. Can we repair it? There's nothing to repair. We need an entire ship mine. Not exactly the first thing you can expect to dredge up from a scrap freighter. Besides. Fragments may be sections of a mind, but a complete ship mind? No way. Nikita climbs out of the cooling well where the ship mine should be. The space suddenly crowded with her on the same level as you. Towering over you as she stoops beneath the low curved ceiling. Come on, nothing to be done here now. She leads you back through the guts of amber. Though you could find the way back yourself. The repair process has left you familiar with the cutter's idiosyncratic layout. All diagonal angles and bundled tubes. What do we do now? Ankita seems lost in thought, and you focus on the corridors, ducking below conduits and passing through bulkheads. Eventually, you arrive in the galley, though it's hard to tell. Most of the benches and prep surfaces are covered in half-stripped components and welded hull patches. Ankita shoves a box of filters to the floor and sits. There's no way around it. He starts out of nowhere. We need a new ship mine. I can salvage one. I like your confidence, sleeper. Maybe if we check the Ord Exchange or speak to some scrap dealers. She rubs her forehead. It seems I'm about to do something very stupid. But hey, I came here, didn't I? Why not make a run of it? He fixes you with a hard stare. Sleeper, you're all I've got. No crew, no friends, you're it. He looks uncomfortable. I appreciate the time you put in on the Amber, and I'm sure she would too, if she could. What I'm saying is if you screw me on this, I will kill you. Thanks. She leans over and hands you a stack of chits. A big stack of chits. You don't dare to count them. Get me that ship mine, sleeper. Don't make me regret this. You won't. He sighs. Look, just get out of here before I change my mind. You slip out of the galley and head back towards the main lock. As you do, Amber growls and creaks like a caged animal. You reach out a hand to calm her. Time to find Ankita a ship mind. Somehow. Give me a hundred? Each. Let's just make one. Buy a ship mind fragment. Boom. And we go over here and make it. See, we came prepared. That's why we bought those two. Last drive complete already. That's why we bought those two last time. Deliver ship bind. Ankita gave you a stack of... Oh. Minecraft achievement unlocked. Built a ship mind from fragments. Oh, cool. Thanks. I wasn't expecting an achievement for that, but cool. Why are you prof awakened and then dot 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 me? What did I do? Ankita gave you a stack of chits so you could acquire a ship mind for Amber. Better make sure to deliver. You drop the huge cylinder onto the mess room table. Ankita can't hide her excitement. You drop the ship mine core onto the galley table with an emphatic BANG! Ankita spins around from where she's been poring over some documents on her slate. Holy shit, sleeper! Did you actually land a ship mine? He rushes over and hefts the huge cylinder, turning it back and forth. Well, shit, it might actually work. He smiles wider than you've ever seen. Where did you get it? I built it. Built it? Well, well, you are full of surprises. Ankita bangs on the galley wall. Hear that, Amber? The sleeper got you a new ship mind. The sound echoes down the ship's passages. You have to admit, being in a small space with Ankita when she's this excited is a little intimidating. Ankita puts the ship mind back on the table. I'll start the process of fitting it as soon as I can. I might need your help with some of it. 
She heads back towards the counter to grab her slate. This isn't the only good news today. Either. Looks like my good karma is finally coming in. He throws the slate onto the table and spins it so you can see the screen. Take a look at this. You'll see a, you see a list of names and numbers. Nothing that exciting. Along with what looks like a transit timetable. I found them. Found who? My crew. He points at a name on the list. Or more specifically, Ashton Cade. It was his past that was used to access Amber and slice the ship mine. I thought he might have been killed or robbed. His past stolen. But it turns out he crossed the Founder's Gap the very next cycle. How do you know? I know some of the crew over at the ferry. Old Mercs. Used to run in an outfit I worked with. I saw them in the Overlook and they mentioned they saw Ashton crossing. I checked the manifests and there he was. So this part is before we renamed the Overlook. Does that you want to? What did I do? What didn't I do? Who knows? Who knows, huh? Looks suspicious. He hasn't said a word since the theft, and anyone wanting to hide out might head to the Greenway and go to the ground. And go to ground. She flexes. He won't get far, though. There's no real docks out there. Only a couple of jetties in the wastes. So what now? Now I fit the ship mind. That's the first priority, she pauses. But maybe you could help me out. Where's this going? It's like this. I head over there, especially in Amber. He'll spot me a mile off and go underground. He'll find a way to slip the station or he'll bury himself so deep in the waste no one will ever find him. But you, Ashton doesn't know you. All I need is for you to go there and sniff around. Not at the commune, not the stacks. He will have gone to the edges, the margins, the wild places. That's what Ashton likes. You see him? You locate him? Ping me on this. He hands you a calm earpiece. Seeing as this is Merc work, I'll be happy to give you Merc pay. She shifts in her seat. The thing is, I haven't got much left. So how about I tell the boys who run the ferry to give you a discount? I know it's not much, but once I grab this coward, I'll pay up. 200 cryo, nothing less. Wait, so if I did her quest first, I wouldn't have had to pay the full amount for the Greenway Pass? Hmm. I don't remember what it was. 100, I think. What do you say? She meets your eye. Okay. She gives you a heavy whack on the shoulder. Good. I owe you. She lifts the ship mind up onto her shoulder without wor with worrying ease. I'm going to go get this and fit it into Amber's core. You get any info? Any sense of where Ashton is hiding? Let me know. She goes to turn and then stops. And once again, sleeper, thank you. I appreciate it. Ankita stomps off into the guts of Amber with the ship mind, leaving you in the galley. You glance around, a sudden nervous energy descending at what is to come. You never thought you'd get work as a mercenary. But then again, it seems the eye is full of surprises. Whoa. Hey, Frap. What's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? Seems everybody's got a big side quest. I don't think I have time to finish hers either, though. Hey, what's LS? Well, that's re-roll my dice, isn't it? Wow! I made it worse. I made it a three. If I did hers first, I wouldn't have had to pay the full amount for this, would I? Wild margins. Artificial wilderness. Huh? Search for signals. Rather than hiking around the wilderness, you can make use of your skills. Tap into the cloud and find Ashton by his signals. Or... Look for tracks. Seems like the obvious way to track someone, but in this overgrown tangle, the simple task suddenly becomes difficult. Tracking Ashton. Ankita seems to think Ashton is out here, at the wild edge of the greenway. Time to see if that's true. Hmm. Interesting. So much stuff. Hmm. 
Doesn't seem to be anything here after you see the gardener. Just here, chill on. Oh. That's good, that's good. We're exploring. Still on our first playthrough. Hmm. More days for that. Get random items. Wow. Arrested. I can haggle over prices now. Ooh. Wait. It was locked before, wasn't it? I guess I needed to engage fully upgraded. I see. Until I forgot about Rabia. I don't think I'm dead in her quest though. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Gotta go spend the last dice on something. Good. Do that. I have so many Yatagan Datos. That seed is in items, not data. I'll probably have to progress something in the Greenway area to get to the point where I can get that. Let's go sleep! Do I, uh, do I, do I have to pay for it again? Just one time? Good, 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 good. Leap time. I guess we'll try re-rolling our twos. Got a, a, a meal. See what it is. Oh, it gave me three. I forget I forget if the other one down the in the beginning area gives me three energy or not. I think it's only two. Got a one and a three. That's all we're getting that. Hey, how you doing? Come running in going, meow. What's up? What's going on? How you doing? I know your food bowl is just fine. I'm 
and took this long for me to find another place to live. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, that other place was scrap. You can reuse too, I think. Oh, oh, you meant Chloe. Yeah, Chloe showed up. She's sitting here staring at me judgmentally right now. Oh no, it's time! Um, uh, hold on a second. One of them stayed one, the other one became a six. Well, there we go, there we go. I'm cute though, let's do her thing. The trail ahead extends deep into an overgrown section of the greenway. At this far end of the ring, where the long, lazy curve of the greenway becomes the shattered landscape of the wastes, things are oddly quiet. Ahead stands a vast farm stack, broken from its axis by rust or force, and lying amongst the overgrown landscape like an ancient temple. It is stained with moss and algae, flows of green running out from its broken tanks like a frozen, brackish tide. This is where Ashton is hiding. You are pretty sure. All your intuition points to the shadows beneath this collapsed superstructure. You roll the calm headset Ankita gave you in your palm. Uh, I'll, I'll call her. You slip the headset into your ear and it fizzes with static. After a few moments, you hear Ankita. Leaper, have you located the target? A double enters your mind, or doubt enters your mind. Can you be sure he is there? Yes, come now. Poppy, hold tight until I get there. The static cuts out, the channel dead. You hold your position and watch the trail. Ahead, the stars wheel with the motion of the eye, and your mind wanders. You try to imagine what this place looked like before the collapse. All ordered rows of crops, corporate pleasure gardens, glowing farm stacks. Now it is a wilderness, a strange overgrown biosphere bordered by the void of space. You smile, despite everything. It seems like an improvement. Leaper, Ankita's hiss brings you out of your reverie. He's in the collapsed stack? I think so. She gives you a look. You better be right. Well, there's no way I'm following that trail. If he's up there, he'll have eyes on that for sure. She glances across the landscape. Let's keep to the undergrowth. Work our way around. She heads off towards the central spine of the greenway with you following close behind. It is slow going there, where the overgrowth meets the metal wall. But it is so concealed that you barely that you can barely see the glass roof high above. Ankita somehow seems to know where to go. What are you humming, huh? Ankita works her way through dense undergrowth, pushing aside branches and fronds. It is exhausting, and you desperately want to rest, but Ankita shows no signs of letting up. Up ahead, there is a faint glow from the collapsed stack. Ankita leads you around the side to a broken tank. You both step through the opening, trying to avoid the broken glass that sits among the moss and algae. You work your way up the slanted tank, Ankita setting a deliberate pace. Somewhere, water drips, and you hear, and you swear you hear birdsong. Wait, uh, you think you do? There's no actual birds? Nobody released any birds on this space station? I feel like somebody would have had a pet bird that escaped. Come on now. Like, why not? Hanging plants catch the light, coating the place in a pale and sickly green. Ankita reaches the edge of the tank, where it meets the central drum, and holds up a hand for you to stop. You inch forward and look over the edge. The vast drum is like a cistern, with plants gr growing on all sides, and wet mossy islands at its base. It is beautiful, and for a moment you can't see anything but tones of green. Then you see the sleeper. In a faint circle of light, descending down through the drum, 
The sleeper lies slumped at an odd angle. They are surrounded by crates, and beside them, on one of the mossy islands, there is an object, a cylinder set on a tarp. It is connected to the sleeper's head. You flinch. We found another sleeper! Are they one of the others? One of the ones that escaped with you? You squint, trying to recognize them. They are twisted, broken, open, wrong. You look away. Rip! Rest in peace. Ankita doesn't look at you. She doesn't look at the sleeper. She fixes her eyes on the object. That's Amber's ship mind. She says, and you suddenly recognize the cylinder. Wait. You turn to Ankita to speak, but she is already gone. She drops off the edge of the tank and lands on one of the mossy islands, her armor letting out a hiss as it absorbs the impact. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. The shot hits her shoulder piece, the ceramic armor cracking but holding as she braces onto the impact. Then she launches herself forward, the now activated armor launching her across the drum. Another shot goes wide before she reaches the cover of the crates beside the sleeper. Shit! You hear the shout from one of the tanks high on the far wall. Ankita reaches over and wraps a hand around the thick connection between the ship mind and the sleeper. What is she doing? You better come down here, or I'll rip this right out- Oh wait, this is her. You better come down here, or I'll rip this right out of their head! She screams at the wall of tanks. You shiver at the suggestion. I mean... We're gonna stay, we're gonna stay silent. There's a long pause. All you can hear is the dripping of the water running down the walls of the drum. Then Ashton calls out. Disgraced mercenary. Okay. Is that the sleeper he's got there? I'm coming down, Ankita. Don't do anything stupid, for God's sake! He appears at the far side of the drum, stepping through the shallow water, rifle raised above his head. I mean, you just shot at her. If, there, if anyone's doing anything stupid, it's you, man. You just shot at her. Just sitting and thinking. Fabulous! Huh. Fabulous! Drop the gun! Ankita shouts. He throws it down onto the moss. As you lean out to watch, you see him catch your eye, clocking your presence. What are you up to here, Ashton, you sicko? He stands, keeping your sidearm trained on his head. You ripped my ship mine for what? Some freakish experiment? Ashton approaches with shaking hands, his eyes now fixed on the connecting bundle of wires that Ankita still has hold of. Betty, Ankita, it isn't like that. I needed the ship mind. You have to understand, they would have died without it. What are you talking about? I don't give a shit why you ripped my ship mind and crippled my ship. I should put you down right now. She tightens her grip on the connection. Typical of you, Ankita. No curiosity. Ashton smiles shakily. That's why I never asked for it. For your help. You only look after yourself. He nods at you. That sleeper up there. They are just bait, right? To draw me out. Ankita sucks a breath in. Are you trying to give me more reasons to shoot you? I love them, Ankita. Ashton looks at the crumpled sleeper. I love them, and they were going to die. I knew you would never understand that. He starts closing the gap between himself and Ankita now, slowly, inching forward. Don't do that, Ashton, Ankita snarls. Don't do that. Let the wires go, Ankita. Let us go. If you don't get out of my way, he inches closer. Please. I can't let you take it, Ashton. Ankita hardens her stare. You stole it from me. You left me for dead. She shakes her head. You think I'm going to trust you? After all that? I mean, you already have a new ship mine. Like, just let it go, man. I need it, Ankita. I need them to survive. Anki Ashton is in reach of the sleeper now, of Ankita. I'm going to take them now, Ankita. He raises a hand. I'm going to take the ship mine and go. Ankita loosens her grip on the connection a little. Her hand is shaking now. Stop, Ashton. He lowers the gun a little. 
Stop. Seeing her drop her guard, he makes his move. Rip. Rip. A blur of movement. A struggle. A shot. Another. Another! You recoil back inside the edge as they ricochet around the inside of the drum. A sound deafening you. When you crawl back to the edge, Ashton is bleeding into the water. The red and the green. Ankita is standing at the center of the drum. The severed connection in her hand. The water drips endlessly. Drip after drip after drip. Aww. Now, if it was me, I would have let them go. Maybe I had to say stop to make that happen. Darn it. You force yourself to look at the broken sleeper. There is no sign of life, of humanity. They are just another broken object among other broken objects. While all around, living things grow and thrive. Ankita finally looks back up at you, tears in her eyes. She begins to say something, something that might be, Sorry. But you are already gone. Damn. Rip. Rip. Well, I think that's the end of that quest. No, they're both three, though. Well, okay. What can you do with my one? Well, there we go. I definitely need, need more data. Well, I guess it's time for um, all this stuff. Oh, they're gonna float. Her hair looks so silly and floaty. Lo no gra no gravity or low gravity. Well, well, well. We'd be all super floaty. Your hair would be going everywhere, man. There is a crowd, but you spot Lem and Mina immediately as you enter the dock. They are waiting at the cordon, where Sela's security are checking the crew in to board the ship. Those that manage to get up to the hub are crowded near the entrance. But even they know their chance of getting on board is long gone. Do that again. Like that, but it's, um, your hair goes... Lamb! Them spots you among the crowd. Sleeper, we are here! They're standing beside a bag which looks to carry all the possessions they have. It is small enough to be carried in one hand. Hi, Mina! Mina is vibrating with excitement. She seems strangely at home in microgravity. But then you remember that she has spent her whole life in space. Hi, robot! Crowful pogs. Pretty cool. You hand over the Sealess ID film to Lem, keeping your own. He turns it back and forth in the light. Where did your friend even get this picture, sleeper? Looks like my old Conway ID. You look, and a shimmering younger limb stares out of the film, harder and clean cut. I spoke to the guard here, he nods to the white and green clad security officer. They'll be doing orientation and role assignment on board. Sounds like we're going to be the working under the core crew. Kind of like an intern. He laughs. What do you think, Meanie? Am I too old to be an intern? Following Lem's lead, you inspect your ID. As you lift the film up to the light, you see something strange. Something that makes you flinch. The face printed in the film is one you recognize immediately. But it is not you. At least, it is not how you look now. You squint at this ghost, confused why you hadn't noticed earlier. It is a picture you remember being taken. A memory that you didn't know you had. You remember signing the forms. A walk to the sleeper tanks. The cold metal floor. You remember the SNARP employee who helped you in, her smile clean and surgical. You freeze in place, thinking of the you that still sleeps somewhere in an SNARP facility, that won't wake up, that won't wake until you are recovered and disposed of. And now you are leaving, 
Will they ever wake up? I mean, I think they'll give up on you and wake up eventually. Oh, wait. Didn't we got rid of the tracker, right? Fell asleep. This is a nice, relaxing game to fall asleep to, Cardinal. It's like, ah. All relaxing. Good game for that. Especially when it's got the that cool, calm music playing. You a good kitty cat. Rub. I mean, if it's the if they got rid of the tracker, then uh, yeah, they'll think I'm dead, and the other guy, the original me, will wake up. You're a good storyteller. Aw, thank you. Bravo, Filia. What's up, huh? You're a pretty cute cat. You gonna walk around and explore? You're looking for your next napping spot, probably. Sleeper? Lem interrupts your thoughts. These guys want us to board. You stare at him without thinking, then notice the guard gesturing to you both to come forward. You all kick off and float over to them, steadying yourselves on the guardrail. You hang back, letting Lem present his ID film first. The guard slides it across a white machine, much like the one Castor printed them from. You reflexively rub the puncture mark on your hand, even though there is no trace of it now. It seems to be your destiny to be someone else's tool. Ooh. Lem and Mina are waved through, the guard smiling at her excited face. Lem turns back to check you are coming. The guard beckons you forward. Yes, you have a choice to go or not. I think this time we will go. Next time we won't go. A bard! You shake off your doubts and hand over your ID film. The guard barely looks at it as they pass it through the scanner and wave you through. A new life built from old things. They didn't even look at the fucking picture and be like, Hmm. 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 This, this picture. Hmm. And then, they're just blindly waving it. If it passes through the machine, then it's good. Who cares if it looks accurate, right? <laughs> you Okay. The masks concerned as you catch up with them. You are so slow, robot. Mina teases, grabbing at you with small hands. Just making sure. Lem nods, and you realize how much harder it must have been for him to cross that threshold. Mina struggles in his arms, trying to get to you, and Lem relents, struggling with both the bag and his daughter. Mina tumbles through the microgravity and grabs onto your clothes for purchase. Pulling herself into your arms, you all proceed up the walkway, the, pa the entrance to the docking bridge yawning wide in above you. Are we family, robot? Mina asks you as you move, taking you by surprise. That's such a sappy question. I guess so. Mina smiles and presses her head against your chest, pleased by your answer. You keep moving up into the docking bridge, then along that thin glass-walled connector, all the time Mina clutching onto you. The lack of gravity means you can't feel her weight, only the grip of her small hands on your clothes. You both stare wide-eyed at the vast hull of the side real horizon, and try to think of this huge machine as a home. Later, when you settle in your bunk, after Mina has finished running back and forth between you and Lem with an endless and infectious excitement, you find yourself looking at your ID film once more. Wow. Somehow, since the last time you looked at it, the image seems to have changed. What? It is still a picture of the old you, the person that signed up to have their consciousness copied and placed into the ownership of S and Arp. But something else has crept into the image, an underlying sense of self-identification. This is also a picture of you. You now. Ooh. The you that survived the eye, that made friends here, that found a way out that escaped against all odds. The other you might never wake up. It might never live again. But so be it. They co con wait. Consigned, they consigned you to a doomed life for their own gain. Their life is yours now. You will live it better than they ever could. Oh, really? 
You lie back on your bunk as the thrust of the side reel's vast engines kick in. This feeling, this rumble, will be your constant companion for the next decades. It will be there when you work, when you watch Mina grow, when you dream of the planet at the end of the journey. It will stay with you when your body starts to fail, despite the best attempts of Lem and Mina, as the years stack up and it exceeds its safe operating period by a decade. It will be the thing you wake up to in those rare moments of consciousness, between which Mina will keep you in a frozen state in the hope of preserving you until your destination is reached. It will still be there when Mina wakes you, tears in her eyes, to tell you of Lem's inevitable death, and it will not relent, despite your desire for a moment of silence. It will be the final thing you hear, as Mina shuts down all but the most vital of all your functions, and hopes beyond hope that you make it to your final destination, all the while doubting that you will. But for now, in this moment of departure, it is still a new sound, a new feeling, and because of this, it is filled with the promise of the future. Ooh. And so, you settle back on your bunk and close your eyes, and in moments you are sleeping a perfect, dreamless sleep. The most peaceful that you can ever remember. That's sad. Long journey to a small whatever. Left the eye carried by someone else's dream. <gasps> Credits! I told you this one was going to be an ending. I told you. This is a sad ending though. In my personal opinion. Because you're getting on some ship to spend decades. The rest of your life most likely. Trying to go to another planet to live a new life. But you'll probably die before you get there. Because the planet's so far away, and I guess there's no space light travel yet. GG! We got some credits! Woo! We found an ending! How exciting! You don't know how to feel about this. It kind of sucks for the people who aren't in cryo sleep. The people who are sleeping are just gonna wake up and be like, oh, that was a long nap. What happened? All the crew members that ha couldn't be asleep, you know, grow old and die. I was like, uh. Kinda sucks. You spend your entire rest of your life on that ship. Where the heck is our light speed travel? God damn it. I thought this was the future. Oh, well, I guess there is multiple endings then. Oh. Or not wake up at all. Well, if uh, the ones that are sleeping just don't wake up, it's not like they don't know. Wow. Wow. Wait, so let's ditch. Let's continue and see where it puts us. Does it put us on the same day? Then maybe we can make the choice to not go? And then do more stuff on the station? I guess there's multiple endings then? Mo most likely. A game like this with so many different uh, quests and stuff. It it'd be crazy not to have multiple endings. That ending's okay, I guess, for Lem and Mina, but... It's kind of sad to like spend the rest of your life on a ship. Waiting to and hoping you get there... But it's to a planet you want to go to before you die but it's unlikely you will because it's an unspecified number of decades until you get there so not it's unlikely that either Lem or Mina would live long enough to get to the planet do, 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 do. Are we back uh, before we made the choice? Yes, we are. Oh, we have the choice to stay, I presume. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Bet you stayed first. Probably. Wait! Something stops you calling out to Lem. Maybe it's fear or nerves? Or just the need to take a little longer in this moment before your world changes once more? A decision was made, you reason, and there's no point in rethinking it again and again. All you can do is move forward in its shadow, until so many cycles pass that you forget it was ever there. Lem spots you among the crowd. Leaper, we are here! 
They are standing beside a bag which looks to carry all the possessions they have. It's, it is small enough to be carried in one hand. Well, this just changes the dialogue a little bit. Lem smiles nervously. Well, I guess so. He huffs the bag. I hope they'll let us take this on board. Got our whole life in here. Hmm. That one's the same. That one's the same. That one's the same. We're gonna wait this time. You wait for a moment. You need to wait for a moment. This is all happening too fast. Changing too much. There are so many questions you have. So many threads to catch hold of. And yet here you are, boarding a ship to who knows where, on a journey that will take decades. Like, yeah, honestly, it'd be cool to, like, if they offered to, like, to go to Mars or whatever. That'd be cool. But it would take you, like, 20, 30 plus years to get to Mars or wherever. I'm sure plant here. Would you do it? Much like years of your life, you're not getting back. Hanging out on planet Earth, you know. I don't know. That'd be cool. Yeah, you did. You stayed first. Oh. She probably had to do another playthrough just to get the going first achievement then. Ha 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 ha. I probably, uh, I'll, pro I'll, pro I'll miss something and have to do another playthrough for it anyway. Ha ha ha. You can do a thing. Okay, go do your thing. And we're going to reconsider. Is this really what you want? How will you even survive? You suddenly feel dizzy, unsettled. You can make out the concerned look on Lem's face as you hold back. The guard gestures again. Nina's eyes, looking back at you, are so bright in the starlight. Ah, they're, they're going to they're gonna guilt trip you and go on board. Sorry, sorry guys. Sorry guys. We, but we have to stay on the eye. We've got unfinished business. You can't do it. You can't get on that ship. You turn away quickly, trying not to look at Lem, to look at Mina, to meet their eyes. You turn away and kick off hard from the guardrail. When you reach the far wall, you turn back. The scene continues in front of you as if nothing has changed. The next set of people are boarding. The crowds are still gathered at, your cor at the cordon. The side rail horizon still blinks. It's yellow hole bright against the stars. And there are Lem and Mina, gliding up towards the docking bridge, bag in hand. Lem is facing away, focused on the steady climb. But Mina is in his arms and is facing back towards you. You watch her face, confused, sullen, but twinkling with a growing excitement as Lem carries her forward. As you watch Mina, you think about your future, about the future you might choose. You know one thing for certain. That future is on the eye. You no longer have any enthusiasm for being carried forward by the dreams of others. For grand futures that unfold like angelic wings across the horizon. The future is being made now, on this spinning ring, among its people and its systems. You are sure of that. But as you watch Mina disappear into the entrance of the sidereal horizon, and much later, when you watch the ship pull away, you feel a sense of longing... A longing to be carried, not by the systems that spin the suns or the corporations that run the colonies, but by love towards an uncertain future, just as Mina was. That, you think, is the future you wish to make here on Erlen's Eye. Aww. Left behind achievement unlocked. Let them go. Aww. Another credit? Wait. Hmm. Once I have to make a choice, though? <clears throat> if I get credits and put before hand off both times, then... Uh, no. Good luck, Lab and Mina! I know, right? Music's too good. True, true. You're calm and relaxing. Good to sleep, too.
Wow. What'd you think, cat? Was that a cool ending? You're sleeping? Okay, fine. Not this cool thing. Loading, 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 loading. Loading, loading, loading. It's loading a lot. Uploading every last bit of data. Oh no, he's bad! A strange choice. Castor stands beside you at the rail, watching the pinpricks of light from the side rail horizons. Wait, watching the pinpricks of light from the side rail horizons drives disappear. But perhaps not unexpected. You turn to look and Castor's beaming at you with an unsettling warmth. Aren't you angry? About what? He squeezes your shoulder. I only wish for you to exercise that strong drive of yours. If it happens to align with my own, then that is pleasing to me. But if it does not, I cannot punish you. What about the Celus? Aster looks out to the stars. Indeed, that is a matter which worries me. Then Dracelis has taken a step back from the public eye. It seems some internal struggles are playing out within their pristine halls. Aster sighs. But I doubt core politics are of much concern to you. Castor moves down along the rail. The eye, though, that seems to be your primary concern. Am I right? I have unfinished business. That's true. He pats you on the back. Don't we all? It is the nature of life to leave things unfinished. That's true, you know. There's always that movie you never watched, that game you never finished. You can't finish everything with a neat bow. Most things, sure, but not everything, though. Not everything. I have more projects than I can count. So many games still to play and things to learn. May your future cycles be as fruitful as my own. Castor turns and starts to clunk away in his mag boots. I will be keeping an eye on you, if you don't mind, sleeper. He waves as he walks. My curiosity remains piqued. Once he leaves, you stay a little longer at the rail, watching the stars. Imagining the look on Mina's face when she sees Silas 1 for the first time. Imagining the excitement when she first touches its soil. The joy when she first stands outside in the rain, laughing. Those images, though, they will not happen for decades. Or what will carry you... Oh wait, those images, though they will not happen for decades, are what will carry you through this cycle, and perhaps the next one too. An unspecified number of decades. I'm not sure that Mina will live long enough, man. Might not live to make it to Seelus 1. That's my issue with going on that ship. You, you, there's no guarantee you'll make it. Wow, I got some garbage dice rolls to this time. Try again. That's better. Let's give all the other money, I guess. You'll make it, I believe. Oh, I don't think we'll ever find out. I think this is that's going to be left as a mystery. Will she ever make it? Maybe. It's up to the player to decide whether to be optimistic or not. I hope she makes it. Liz is incredibly grateful. I'll pay you back every chit. I promise you. You guess you two are partners now. I don't know if you'll pay me back every chit. I have my doubt. Hmm? Babe, you achievement unlocked. Bought into the hub's competitive repair market. Yeah. Repair bid. Bliss is bidding on jobs at the hub. It'll take a few cycles and some perseverance before one comes in. Hmm. Well, 
doing now? So we can buy some food. And then Citizen Sleeper 2 confirmed. Yeah, maybe. Base your food is a slurry of modified compounds and vitamins laced with a dose of algae. It's effective nutrition, but little else. Yum, algae. I gotta say, I've never had algae before. I wasn't aware algae was, like, something you can eat, but okay. I have the feeling that, uh, Ankita's side quest is done. Just a guess. Just a guess. I need to make some money now. I need to do some job to make some money. Or maybe I could sell my Yatagon data. I have like freaking 14 of them, don't I? How much do I get for? And less than I was hoping for. The acquisitions officer eyes you suspiciously as you download the data to her terminal. This is more than she was expecting. I was like, how did you find this? I'm suspicious. How did you get this data? Algae's packed with vitamin B12, apparently. Oh, really? I did not know that. I wasn't even aware algae was something that you could eat. That seems crazy to me. Yeah, like that. Food is food though, right? Ones are always low numbers. Hmm. Do we have any more quests to work on down here? I think we do. I'm gonna steal a shipment. Give me 100% positive guarantee. Oh. We got some mushroom rooms. Not enough for this guy? I think I needed three actually. I might get in trouble. If that red circle fills up. But, uh, you yeah, might, might as well see what happens to it. I'm for that stabilizer! Also one of the world's largest producers of oxygen, oxygen, apparently, more than trees. Yeah, I've heard of that. The trees be like, hey! What'd you say about us? What'd you say about us? Did I get any scrap from those items? I did not. I'm curious what'll happen when that fills up. Oh, I got two scrap. Huh? Loot boxes achievement unlocked. Stole three shipments just to see what was inside. God damn it! I feel called out right now. How dare you! I can't do it anymore, huh? All that happened. Oh, all they did was like close it off to me. Okay. I thought I was gonna get arrested. I wanted to get arrested and see what happened. A couple ship mine fragments. I still need one more scrap somewhere. Do, 
do, do, do. I might hold on to the ship mine fragments to see if I need them for anything else, but I have the feeling I'm done with those. Personally, what I say. No proof, just a feeling. I wonder if there's always data here. Hmm. Let's do Rabia's quest. I haven't touched her quest at all yet. This just gives you energy? Oh, they'll both they'll both go go toward Yadagon Insider. Yeah, we got energy too. Only one point. Eh, yeah, I didn't think dice reroll would work when you didn't have any dice. I thought I'd try it though. I thought I'd try it. I only got one upgrade point, so I can't upgrade anything. Complete active scenes. There's an active scene somewhere? Let's go find the active scene we have to do. Where could it be? I think it'll be over here. Oh, Ankita. You spot Ankita on the track to the farm stack. She has a box on her shoulder and is working her way down the slope. She sees you as she approaches. I honestly thought Ankita's quest line was done. Neither of you speak for a moment. She looks tired, pale. Her hair is tangled in clumps of dirt cling to her armor. You both eye each other. Stay silent. Leaper. She takes a deep breath. I'm sorry for what happened. Truly, I am. He looks down. I am sorry you end up, ended up in the middle of this, when all you have shown me is kindness. He rubs her face. I'm sorry. Stay silent! For that sleeper that... He stares at the floor. I'm sorry. He looks up and away, not meeting your eye. Did we forgive her or not? I think she's stupid, but I'm not sure if what she did was unforgivable or not. It's not for me to judge in my personal opinion, so we're going to be like, it's okay. She nods, then looks up to the stars. I've never... She stops herself. Thank you. You'd lose a fight against a tree, to be honest. I mean, trees are pretty tough, I'm pretty sure. If you don't give anyone any tools, no axes or anything, that we would all lose a fight against a tree. Like, a, a, a proper tree. No no baby little sapling, okay? Like, a proper tree. Like, a, uh, you know. Uh, I'm pretty sure you try punching one, you'd lose. I know I would. Ankita shifts the weight of the box on her shoulder. I've been preparing for... She grimaces. Look, she sighs. Can you come with me? It's easier if... If what? You see it, she finishes. It's just down the way. Ankita leads on down the dirt path between the pillars. There is a wind passing through the greenway. A quirk of the air currents the biosphere maintains and it ruffles the leaves softly. The sound makes the silence more obvious, more complete. You try not to think of the last time you were here. You've been trying not to think of it for the past few cycles. The image of the sleeper, sprawled, twisted open, connected to the ship mind, has been hard to forget. You realize Ankita is leading you back there, back into the drum at the center of the stack. 
You pause, trembling a little, at the threshold. She turns. Uh, what are you doing? She looks at you with empty eyes. What needs to be done? You stand on the threshold and look up at the tanks, green and wet, some glowing with flickering grow lamps. You look down at Ankita, suddenly so small under this hulking ruin. The smallest she has ever looked. She places the box down. Ah, let's follow her in. You follow Ankita into the stack through a low tank, entering the drum at ground level. It is just as beautiful as you remember, but it barely touches you. Instead, you check the apertures of the tanks for a glint of a weapon, or a shadow among the moss. Ankita stops, and you look down. The mossy island at the center of the tank is clear now. The equipment cleared away. In its place is a mound of dirt, loosely covered with moss. Ashton's rifle stands straight, half buried in dirt, the dirt at the grave's head. Oh, she buried him here, huh? I buried them together, Ankita says without turning. You both stand there in silence for a little while. You think of questions you could ask about Ashton, about the sleeper. How long did you know him? It takes a moment to respond, and for a moment you think she won't, but then the words come gushing out. He signed on a while ago. He used to run recon for a corporate outfit, but he got sick of the pay. He joined the crew as a sniper, and the first few jobs were a breeze. He was so cold, disconnected. He always hit his marks. The last few jobs, though, he was different. I noticed that. We'd had a period of extended shore leave on the eye, and when he came back, he was changed. I assumed he'd just had too much time off. He was right. I never would have given him the ship mind. I wouldn't have believed him. I've had crew members double-cross me, undercut me, rat me out. That's the business. He wasn't a good person. None of us in this job are. This is how we die. Alone. He stops, not sure of what to add. It seems like she is reaching for something, but she can't quite get there. You feel that gap between you, and as you do, it widens. The water drips. The moss trembles. You both stand in silence for a while longer. You both feel it. Life creeping back in. The silence ending. Ankita shifts her weight and then starts to walk out. You follow her, suddenly eager to be back out in the open space of the greenway. To be away from this place forever. You stand outside and breathe the fresh air. You stare at the green leaves and the stars wheeling above them. That's it, says Ankita, from somewhere behind you. You try to think of something to say, but can't. Ankita puts a hand on your shoulder. You turn back to her. At least take this. She forces a handful of cryochits into your hands. It's what I owe. She looks at you desperately. You look down at the metal bars. Ugly little things, you think. I mean, I'll take them. You take the chits and turn without saying a word. You continue up the track and she does not follow. As you walk up the rise, the wind picks up and the leaves shudder. You walk faster, trying to outpace your anger. The chits are heavy in your pockets and you hate them for reminding you of how little a life is worth. The bad end achievement unlocked. Found an old crewmate at the edge of the room. Ouch. You made it back. Don't sound too disappointed. Welcome back! In general, which button have you pressed more? Square, X, or X, A? PlayStation, Xbox. Hmm. Which button do you press more? I feel like... You would press square more. Where would usually be like attacking or reloading your weapon or something. But A, A or X is a pretty good one too because that's usually jump in games. It would have to be one of those two. My bet would be on square slash X though. But I gotta say I don't have the statistics down. I haven't memorized how many times I've pressed buttons. A would be a pretty good one though. Most of these buttons, I do press A to interact with everything here, so maybe it's A, actually. I don't know. I don't know. In this game, definitely A, though. Definitely, 
But it kind of also depends on the game. I can upgrade something. Hmm. Ooh, actually, I kind of want to save an upgrade point to get more of a discount. Because uh, I could get more of a discount for three upgrade points there. Maybe I get 40% or something. 50%. We're going to say it. Well, we did the thing we needed to do. I would see Ankita's quest is actually done now. Does the paint job get faded from pressing too much? My controllers are all like that. Uh, mine aren't, though. Maybe you're pressing your buttons too hard. Mine are still looking the same. I still look super, super cold, super shiny. What's this? Oh, I gotta wait for her to finish her repair bits. And keyboard. Keyboard looks the same too. Not worn out. What are you doing to your stuff, man? I feel like that you sunbathing ability is kind of worthless. Because I have to use a dice for it. Now, I'd rather use the dice on getting data or... Completing something. And before there's an achievement for using the sunbathing thing 50 times. I'll be like, excuse me? We're working on Rabia now, right? Scrap components. Ooh, let's do it. Yay! It'll take a while to get this. Well, actually, wait. We do scrap components. We can sell them, right? Can't I finish, uh... I need one for this, right? You've got a tidy pile of scrap in one corner of the unit. Next step is to use it to seal the unit. Oh, with all the materials, the unit now needs sealing section by section to be usable. It's a la laborious task, but the outcome is worth it. Hmm. I wonder what happens when I finish that? One or three. You have soft, smooth, feminine cat-like fingers, right? He's never touched a farming tool. Well, I don't know about the soft, smooth, feminine cat-like finger part, but it is true I've... I haven't touched a farm. Actually, I have touched a farming tool before. But not for a long time. Back when I was still a kid. And we'd have garden to maintain. As an adult, though, I've only lived in apartments. So I haven't had, like, an outside yard or garden or anything. So it's been quite a long time since I've touched a farming tool. But I have touched to farming tools before. I've touched like a rake, a hoe, a shovel. I've touched farming tools before. But not for a long time. Not for quite a while. There's something nice about your empty container, huh? Is it long? I mean, that's feel it feels long to me. Why are you Bible thumping, Dobie? Wait. What? Who are you? Oh, Bliss's assistant. Are you with her uh, brother? You look a lot like her, actually. Hey. A quiet voice greets you as you leave. Leaper, it's me. Do I know you? Moritz. He pauses. I work for Bliss. He rubs the back of his head. You are not an easy person to find. I don't really have an address. 
Moritz holds up his hands. Hey, no judgment, it's cool. You both stand there for a moment, each waiting for the other to speak. So... Ah, yeah, well, Bliss needs you. A job just came in, a real big one. He's asking for you to come up and help her out. He nods sagely. Okay, soon. Soon, he repeats it back to himself. Look, Bliss said I've got to get you right now, so, you know. He shrugs. Now is better than soon. Moritz stands there for a little while, unsure if the message is delivered. I've got it. Cool, cool, cool. He looks around. Bliss just likes me to do a thorough job, you know? He rubs his hands together before burying them in his jacket pockets. See you, sleeper. Moritz ambles off down the corridor, picking at a filter cap on his way out. Time to head to Bliss's Bay, then. He's kind of, um... Like a, an introvert trying to have a conversation. He's kind of like, Yeah, you know, uh, if, some, if you could come now, I'd be cool. Did her thing even finish the cycles? Didn't she have, like, two more days? Oh, it's a time-limited thing. Ember's Wake Malfunctioning Fuel Tanker? Because you, Proffle Stare! Stare! I'm gonna stare rock at you. By the way, you know my country already. I can't remember if you're absolutely hard to do it. Uh, you said your first language was, was Portuguese, right? The only country I know that speaks that language is Brazil. If it's not that, I have no idea. If it's not that, I have no clue. You said, like, what, nine countries or something speak that? It is? Aha! <laughs> Please don't stare at me like that. Wait, so you can stare at me, Dolby, but I can't stare at you? How is this fair, man? How is this fair? Not a critical action, huh? Full system flush? Bliss has an idea. A full system flush with tracer fluid to reveal the leaks. Which means an emergency venting of all tanks. Brilliant! Dangerous. Obviously, I'm going to use my full, full, uh, one for that. Tank recladding. Typically, the way to fix this kind of leak is to painstakingly inspect and reseal the entire ship's cladding. But is there time? Hmm. Ember's wake contract? Somehow, Bliss swung a tanker contract, but the catch is that the work needs to be turned around fast. Too fast. Sealing the leaks? The tanker's crew have detected a set of leaks, and they need to isolate and seal them as soon as possible. That's where you come in. Let's do this. Boom. Because you don't know, you haven't thought that far ahead. You're so tiny. Excuse me! I'm huge! Huge! I can't believe you. Calling me. Tiny! For shame. Or could you? I can't believe he called me tiny. Oh, I'm 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 sitting in the corner so they don't block most of the gameplay, okay? Okay, go blocking the game. I'm not gonna stream the game and be like this. Now am I? I go be like I'll be in this corner. I'm gonna take off i am take like thirty percent of the game screen. I'm not gonna do that! You're crazy! I'm not gonna do that! That's how most people do it. Most people sit here and take up like a third of the game screen. <laughs> Especially in a game like this with so much text you can read. I'd be blocking so much text. Alpha Pog! That reminds me. One time I was watching somebody play Little Nightmares 2 after I'd finished playing it. I was wa watching other people play it. No. This one VTuber was doing what I just did. She was, uh, she was, take, she was like this or something. And someone asked if, uh, and Chad if asked if, uh, she could, uh, make herself a little smaller for the game. Stop blocking so much of the game or whatever. I don't remember exactly what they said. And she was like, sure! And she went down like that. A tiny little bit. Barely any different. 
And I was just like profile pogging to myself. I was just like, <laughs> it's funny. I thought it was amusing anyway. That'll show them how dare they ask questions like that. You sh you tell them. See all these leaks? Hmm. Don't want to try rolling for the last two? Sure. Ooh, yeah, we got a good one. We did it! Can you even bless a single leak is found and sealed? You must agree this is taking too long. It's already done. Did you make yourself bigger or block more of the game? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna... We're, just, we're gonna be like this. You guys only get to see the game no more. It'll be like that. No game for you. No game for you. Obviously not. I'm obviously not gonna do that. You foolish, foolish person. As you both wait in the airlock for it to cycle back to the bay, Bliss thumps you on the arm. Nicely done, sleeper. We cleared that contract, no problem. He stretches. Once we are back in the bay, we can check if the payment has come through and divide it up. He stretches. Feels good. Ugh. Stretch. The airlock clunks and the lights flicker, and a moment later you are back in the bay, where Moritz is at the racks, trying to figure out where the mess of tools Bliss left in her wake should be hung. Hey, Moritz! Moritz looks over his shoulder. Sleeper. He spins a wrench in his hand. Looks like clean work out there. He nods respectfully. You look over at Bliss, who is already gliding over to her management console. She twirls a little as she crosses the cavernous bay. No one you've ever met moves as well in Zero-G as she does. It's like she was born into it. Maybe she was. Shit! Bliss slams a fist onto the console. Shit, shit, shit! What's up? I can't even... Bliss closes her eyes. I'm here. Bliss calls you over. Look at this. Just look. She spins the terminal screen and you see the details for the bay's account. You see an entry for the Ember's Wake. A repair fee, paid in full the moment you finished up the job. But then directly tra wait, but then directly after the whole account was transferred back out into an unknown account. Someone hacked him? And stole their shit? How can this happen? I can tell you how. My ex is a sneaky little conniving shit. Ooh, damn. He punches the terminal. I don't think that's gonna make the terminal work. He must have coded a back door into the machine before he left. He rubs her forehead. There's no way we can... She pauses, thinking. Moritz, throw me that wrench. What's that for? Moritz sp spins the wrench across the bay. Bliss smiles. This! Bliss brings the wrench down on the terminal, hard. You flinch backwards as a hail of computer parts spill up into the bay in a glittering arc. Fragments of screen, memory, sections of the casing. You're gonna destroy it and get a new computer. When Bliss is done, she clips the wrench to her tool belt. Try backdooring your way into that, you shit. Moritz drifts out from his hiding place amongst the racks. Bliss, he says tentatively. You want me to... He looks at the arc of fragments drifting around the bay nervously. Bliss shakes her head. No. He sighs. I've got it. You go get me a new terminal. Cheapest you can find. Cobble one together from pieces at the Ord Exchange if you have to. Can I help? Bliss glides over to a panel by the wall. Don't worry. One of the first things I had installed when we specked out this place was a cleaning sweep. He flicks over a plastic cover on a huge red button. Watch yourself. She hammers the button and a row of lasers, laser emitters unfold from the bay wall. They start crawling their way across the work area, frying the debris as they do in pulses of burning light. Bliss smiles. It's that or just space the whole bay every few cycles. That's an interesting way to get rid of trash. What now? Bliss sighs. We keep at it. The cleaning sweep buzzes and crackles as it works its way across the bay. That account wasn't everything. I'm not that stupid. Once Moritz gets back, I'll secure it and flush everything else. He flicks a nearby piece of debris into the path of the sweep. Clean break. Then we take another contract. That's it. He shuts off the sweep as it reaches the near end of the bay. 
You don't want the cryo back? I mean, she, I'm sure she does, but how are you going to get it back? Oh, I want it, but it's gone. He could have transferred it anywhere. He looks out across the hub. And even if I knew where he was, the last thing I want is to ever see him again. He rubs her forehead. I'm sorry, sleeper. I know you worked for this too, but next time won't be the same. That's okay. Better not be sounds kind of mean. You know, it's not, it's not like she, uh, she did a deliberate like, about that? She smiles. Even a few cycles, Moritz will let you know. He winks and kicks off into the bay to finish cleaning up. Man. Don't have anything up here, do we? Nope. What do we do with our one? Let's see if we can do a data thing. We can! I have the feeling there's always data to extract. I don't think I'll ever actually run out. Maybe I'll run out eventually. It feels like there's always one, though. Feels like there's always a bajillion of them. What's this? Uh. I'll hold on to my fragment ship mines for right now. Do do do. What's this? I was working on Rabai, right? Her scrap components. I can sell for money. Wow. Hmm. That wasn't full yet, though. As you say your goodbyes to the other enforcers and walk back through the low end, a chirping catches your attention. In a quiet corridor away from the main thoroughfares, someone has stuck a small recorder to the wall with suit sealant tape. Written across the fluorescent tape is one word. Leaper. Hmm. That might be for me. You peel it away from the wall, and as you do, it triggers some kind of improvised trip switch. Oh, really? Sabine's been in hiding for like forever. Leaper, Sabine's voice crackles through. I have seen you with Yadagon members. Are they holding you captive now too? I whine. I am sorry if I have dragged you into this. Do not trust them. Something is happening within the gang. Some kind of power struggle. You cover the speaker a little. Their voice too loud in the quiet corridor. I will come soon. Thanks to your efforts, I have located most of their properties. At the right time. A pause. I will deal you I will see you soon. Don't give up. Remember our deal. The recording cuts out. You stare at the recorder, processing what you have just heard. Hearing Sabine's voice again opens up something inside of you. An SNARP employee. Do they know that I know? You struggle with a mix of concern and distrust. You throw the recorder into a nearby waste chute as you leave the corridor, still unsure who to trust, and head quietly out of the low end. Interesting. All right, back to sleep. <sighs> oh, I got good dice rolls today. What the heck? Give me more scrap components. My cellar, ma. I probably only give me like ten uh, things. Just you wait.
Hmm. Do I have any with a two? Or just one three. Oh, Haven Age is a two. Nap Tom. Ah, I'm getting some good dice rolls. me for what I do now Rubaya Yadagon lieutenant this time you meet inside Rubaya's office although now that you've seen it uh, office seems like the wrong term you find her stood in an almost bare shadowy unit stood not standing kind of weird midway through a sequence of stretches there are two low stools and a terminal in the corner, but it seems that most of the space is taken up by a heavy punching bag, rubber matting, and a stack of weights. When Rabia turns to greet you, you realize that she is missing an arm. The prosthetic she usually wears is set in a cradle near the terminal, a web of colored wires running to it. Hmm. Updates, she says, noticing you where you noticing you looking where artificial arm usually is. Nothing to worry yourself with. Sorry, I... Don't be. I am sure you've been on the receiving end of more invasive stares than I ever have. You both settle on the stools, Rabia crossing her legs on top and sitting straight-backed. Jaya told me you have been doing the rounds, collecting tithes, patrolling the ward. She smiles. Some of the enforcers are impressed, and I hear you handled a few difficult circumstances. Nicely done. I wanted to see for myself! myself he raises an eyebrow be what for yourself if i can trust you i see rabia flexes her neck side to side and the conclusion nah. i guess i can rabia nods thank you she closes her eyes for a moment i hope you can see i hope you can see how things work here now a strong Yadagun means a strong low end. Both are woven into each other. I know that for you, life on the eye has been a struggle, but I hope we can do something about that from here onwards. Though some of our members may not see it this way. I know you too are a refugee. He looks at you solemnly. That is why you have come to us. Oh, what are you doing here? Enough, Rabia. The bean's voice cuts through the conversation. I am tired of listening to your affected nobility. They cross the room, Rabia's baton in their hand. The end lit with sparky, sparking electricity. Ugh. Rabia looks between the two of you. Hey, wait, if he's got the baton, why does she have the baton right there? She's also got her arm right there, too. What do you mean they didn't adjust the illustration? Rabia looks between the two of you. I suppose this ambush was another cooperation between you two? She looks strangely unfazed. No, they are acting alone. That's the truth. The bean pauses, thrown off for, for a moment by your renunciation. Uh-oh. Rabia takes this opportunity to act. She leaps from the stool and, fainting past Sabine, grabs the baton and twists it inwards. She is by far the stronger, and she pushes Sabine to their knees clenching the crackling end of the baton towards their chest. They freeze there, Sabine struggling to keep the crackling baton from their skin. Ah! And you support them? Rabia asks you, her eyes not leaving Sabine. Your loyalties are so easily swayed. I thought you were more than Yannick's attack dog, Rabia. Sabine spits back. Are you not able to think for yourself? Rabia holds the baton strong, and for a moment she thinks she is about to hammer it down into Sabine's chest. But, after a painful wait, she throws Sabine down instead, 
and spins the baton in her hand, thumbing a switch and shutting it off in a single move. Uh, Rabia, explain! They both look at you, each still catching their breath, as if they had forgotten about your presence. Explain what? How the moment I call my enforcers will come down here and take them away? Rabia cracks her neck. You are lucky I didn't kill you. I would have had every right. Every right! She shouts, the anger a release of tension more than a threat. The bean lifts themselves a little, bruised from the fall. They roll onto their side and cough. Rabia gives them some sa space, sitting back on the stool. The bean props himself up on their elbows and fixes Rabia with a hard stare. You have something to say? Rabia taunts. Say it. This is your final opportunity. Because after this, she laughs. No coming back. What's the point? Sabine breathes heavily. She refuses to listen to criticism of the great Yadagon project. Rabia collects herself. Speak. She folds her arms and waits to be convinced. Sabine takes a breath, organizing their thoughts. They go to start, pause, then decide on another approach. Eventually, they say it. Yannick is a traitor. Rabida immediately flinches, her eyes going to her prosthetic arm, her muscles clenching, but she rides it out, more eager to prove Sabine wrong than she is to hurt them. At least for now. When I came here from s and Arp, they... They glance at you, gauging your reaction. It was Yannick who was one of the first to support me. To look after me. I should have known then, but I was naive. And afraid. The bean turns to you. Sleeper? I take a breath. I know that I should have told you I worked for SNARP long ago, but my thought would but I thought you would abandon me, and you are my final friend. What you should know is that I left SNARP because I was running for my life. I leaked documents on the sleeper program, on the illegal and immoral practices it relied on, to the press. SNARP wanted me dead, and I fled as far as I could, to this refuge at the edge of the surrogate systems. The bean stops to collect himself. What does this have to do with Yannick? Rabia interrupts. The sleeper knows you are SNARP. I told them. And while you hide beneath the cover of being a whistleblower, you and I both know you worked on the sleeper program. Yannick told me as much. The bean's face falls. It is true. They glance at you and then away. Ashamed. I'm now ashamed. I mean. I'm, I'm totally mad. I'm already over it. I I'm fine with this. They lift their head. But it is Yannick, not me, who is in the pocket of SN Arp. Rabia flinches again. I can prove it. He made some kind of deal to keep me here, to tie me up in debt, to lock me away. In exchange... Robyer slams her hand on the desk. Just tell us, for God's sake! In exchange for those, the bean fl finishes, nodding toward Robyer's prosthetic arm in its cradle. He has been using Yadagon enforcers, using you as test subjects for SNR technology. I have the data to prove it. He has been bringing them in, uh, in, in under the guise of stolen shipments and having me fit them, knowing each one is capturing data and sending it back to its makers. Rabia's fixed expression has started to fade. Bean produces a slate. It's all here. Thousands of hours of usage data. Failure rates, error dumps. These are untested implants for Rabia. They could, have short, they could short out, fail, cause cascade failures across a person's body. And they have. The bean suddenly looks incredibly tired. I thought the error rate in the units was down to them being stolen or modified. I have tried to fix hundreds of failures in my time here. Not all of them. They stop, unable to continue. Rabia closes her eyes and breathes in. Then she opens them again. She holds out a hand to Sabine. Show me, she says. Later, much later, when you leave, Sabine is still taking Rabia through the manifests and usage data. Both of them crowded around the terminal as Sabine leads Rabia through each layer of Yannick's betrayal. As you leave, Sabine catches your eye, and something passes between you. Something like a thank you, or a sorry, 
or some other expression that communicates both sadness and hope. We we didn't die. We didn't we, we didn't we, Sabine didn't die. We didn't die. Everybody everybody fine. Mm, we got over here. I'm kind of good on money, so. Hmm. Uh, don't we have undergrowth or something? Yeah! We can do that. Wow, we got two! Still nothing here. But I think this undergrowth thing is where the seed's gonna go. That's my speculative guess. Alright, who's got- who needs a one? You need a one? Okay. Oh, look at the time! It's been three and a half hours! Time flies. Oh, that's a cute cat. She's looking adorable. Oh, there she is. That's illegal. It's illegal, 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 illegal. Looking very cute. Alright, let's go rest up. And then that'll be it for this game for today. Oh, we're gonna have another thing. Mark's probably gonna show up and say, like, get the fuck over here. Yep. Laper! Moritz is waiting for you on that way out. How have you been? Surviving? Moritz nods. That's the struggle. And glances around. He runs his hand through his hair. I have been meaning to ask you, sleeper. What's it like? He pauses, suddenly unsure. I mean, you know, what does it feel like? Be a sleeper? Yeah, he shrugs, if you don't mind. It's strange. Hmm, yeah, I know I can't understand it, you know, with your frame and, well, everything else. But I wanted to say I have a lot of sympathy for it. Like, having to find a place? Having to survive? Having no future? He looks down. A lot of people around here understand that. He has described nothing that doesn't apply to all the people here. Moritz looks away and you notice him for the first time, not just as Bliss's assistant, but as someone with their own worries, their own struggles, their own life. You feel bad for not noticing earlier. Moritz looks back at you. Anyway, got a message for you. Bliss sent me down. We've scored another contract and she needs your help. Ask the message. He pauses. Look, I know last time the payment didn't come through, but you did good work. Bliss knows that. It's no problem. Okay, then. He pauses again. He's doing her best, you know? I know. He nods. Seeing you up there. Or see you up there. Morch turns and strides off, leaving you in the corridor. Time to help Bliss. And maybe this time, you think to yourself, it'll work out. Second time's the charm. Second time's the charm. Sycamore seed. Haifa farm parader. Yeah, on the those dice. One, two, four, four! It'd have been cool if it was one, two, three, four. And before random RNG achievement that requires getting one, two, three, four, five. Ne never get it. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Never, ever, ever, ever. Alright, alright, alright. That's it for this game. For this week. That's it. Okay, we've done our time. We helped Lem and Mina go go make a new life for themselves. Baby. Good luck to them. 
Maybe they'll do okay. Who knows? Ugh. Who knows? Well, now I got more things to do. More people to help. I guess we're gonna be confronting Yannick next time. Uh, maybe figure out where that garden seed goes. And, uh, some more bliss help and stuff. Uh, and, uh, we're, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Let, 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 we got this. Probably in a garden. Yeah, I'm gonna be gardening next time. We're gonna do something with that seed. We're gonna be clearing undergrowth. It'll be exciting. We got this. That's it, though. That's enough video games for today. Enough for today. Only. Sure. Careful, wink. Zip. Zip. That was another hip hopping and bopping popping stream. Isn't that exciting? Hmm. No stretch. Stretchy uh, uh. stretch. You take care of yourself, Doby, for the next five minutes. You, you take care of yourself, uh, Paro and Carbido. And Frap and the uh, uh, Pie and the. Uh, anybody else who stopped by tonight? You take care of yourself. You get your sleep. You are now. Good! Good. I'll be back before you know it sometime. Like, uh, Monday, probably. I'll be doing scenario mode in F1 2013. That'll be cool. Until then, have a nice weekend, everybody.